Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast. Welcome, one and all, to the Republican uh, first debate of the season. And boy, <laughs> can I not wait to tell you my thoughts on politics and whatnot. Uh, we've got a staunch member of the good old... Was there, was there a good, good old party? Isn't there a term yeah, for the yeah. Republicans? The, yeah, the GOP. The GOP. The GOP. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Grand old uh, party. Ben. Ben. Um, front runner. <laughs> as your Republican president, I would burn each and every one of you for fuel. <laughs> <laughs> a bold proposal, but an inevitable one. Uh, Hypocrite is here. Uh, it's me, a cow. Moo. <laughs> oh, that's that's damn. the symbol, right? That's, that's the, the animal. That's the kind of thing that I would crack down on as a Republican <laughs> president. No more of These this. cows running for public office has to be stopped now. Uh, we can't trust them. They're shifty. Uh, Tom Oliver. I have no idea why we've been calling Souls games and their elk souls like because I just watched an interview uh, of the mm-hmm. guy who made Neo and apparently like some head at Sony calls them Massacre and I think that's the fucking best name ever and we should use it. Ooh, uh, I mean uh, Hippo has a hmm. a name. It, it it's dark a, demon it's blood. A, yeah, cl- dark demon blood. Um now with Sekiro it'd be like dark demon blood shadow. Well, the, yeah, okay. the, the, so the, it's the it's point, clunky point, but it's cool. The point is that it's for uh, all the games, even the ones outside of FromSoft. Yeah. Um, okay, okay, Massacore right. Ma- makes okay. sense. Massacore sounds like it would also apply to something like Super Meat Boy or uh, I Want to Be the Guy. True. Maybe, maybe it does. These are never going to be perfect. Or, or Dynasty Warriors. I mean, is, is the implication here? Is the implication here how hard it is? is I don't. I don't the... know. It was weird because it was just like an IGN hmm. video that I was just looking for footage because I'm making a video. Dude, on Crash right Bandicoot now. is so Massacore. And they just translated <laughs> at, at it first... as talking about they had a bunch of influence from Bloodborne. And like, yeah, the guy from Sony uh-huh. who pioneered the massacre genre and worked on Bloodborne. I'm like, what the fuck? Where did this come so, from? I've so never so he's just before. to be clear, that's a that's a play on uh, masochist as opposed to massacre, right. which is what yeah. I was first thinking. <laughs> <they're not. laughs> it's it's yeah, a masochism yeah. and, and hardcore. Of which of which uh, what's that what's that one? Uh hatred would definitely be a part of that. Uh, oh, that yeah, new dude. that new anime girl school shooter game, that definitely counts. Whoa. Uh, well that's that's like a year old or something. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I gotta, get, I gotta play those on IMG. I forget the name. Okay. It's a JRP. It's a it's a uh, uh, what, what's the word? Uh, game maker, not game maker. RPG maker. It was made in RPG maker, and it's a school shooting game where you play as a girl. It's like a it's like a choose your option game. I think where you just like visual novel style. You walk into um, the classroom. A battle. A turn based battle starts. You have one command: shoot. There are like twenty enemies on screen. They're all named like student A, student B, student C. You <laughs> just go shoot, shoot, shoot. You know, to be fair, I didn't look at much. It's not like that. But you know what game mm. is like that? Page one of the champion. Now that I think about it, it that's it, a massacre game. <laughs> in, it's a ma- in a massacre core kind of sense. Indeed, exactly. Oh, by the way, also Munchie is here. I was going to say you impotent whelp, and then talk about how I was creating the neo progressive bull moose party. But the moment has passed, and no one remembers the opening premise. <laughs> no, that's good. Of joke that's of good. this episode. So I'm, I'm you know voting what? for you. You know what? Okay, thank you, Nate. I appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> You've got my endorsement and, and my subservience <laughs> in all things. <laughs> all right. I want to I want to oh, kick things off. I want to kick things mm-hmm. off with um. Uh, Steam versus the Epic Store. People have mm-hmm. been talking about like uh, something dude, about like some bullshit or some sort I of love, bullshit I going on. I love Boogie, dude. I love Boogie so much. Was Boogie talking about what? This? What does he have to say about the? Subject? Isn't Boogie? You know what? I don't even know. I don't remember if Boogie is a shill for the Epic Store or if he hates <laughs> okay. the Epic Store and talks about how much he hates it. Either way, fuck. I'm him. guessing the latter, but and I don't he's know. An idiot. He, well, like sure. I, I haven't really <laughs> okay. looked into too much of like what people are angry about. I just think hmm. that it is strange that people are angry at all because um, every argument I've seen is like, well, that doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter that there's exclusive. Well, here's, here's on just PC the first thing because what is it's it's like you don't have to buy a console. About? Right. What, what is happening the, right now? Ste- ste- right, I'll, I'll, I'll set the ground later. Please. Mm-hmm. Steam is a place where you buy games online on PC. Whoa, the- wait, stop. Hold on. Wait, can you repeat <laughs> that? Steam. Computer? Yes. What? <laughs> and then there's this game called Fortnite, which uh, owned by oh, Epic Games. God. They mm. made an Epic <laughs> store. <laughs> We're moving in- so fast. <laughs> and they ma- they also have a big PC gaming a uh, store where they're buying up uh, deals with certain indie games and larger games and whatever mm-hmm. to have games exclusively uh, exclusively on their store 
and there's a big like uh cons- like a uh, war going on i guess and people are like championing steam cuz it has like a shopping basket uh and uh that's it i yeah, i don't really know what the 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 people championing steam really have going for them other than there's many features in steam but steam is also convenience big... maybe that's the main thing i i would think it's annoying to have to get a second thing i, I don't know yeah. well I it's mean, not are... even that difficult like i i the the, the reason no, i no, have like so much like disdain for the fact that there's a war about it is that you know that image of like uh you know the artist puts his cake on the table and he sees another cake and he's like oh shit that's a big cake that's a better cake than mine and then the se- mm-hmm. the, the 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 viewer comes and he says holy shit two cakes and i'm the two cakes guy i see two uh, stores yeah. they're both good they're both fine they both have stuff on them they have they both have good deals and free shit and i'm like hey i can download these free apps put them right next to each other on my desktop i can easily see all the games i can just click i want them to it's compete just, to it's make just the things good better like i don't whatnot. see like any argument that i've seen is like that's that's not important what i'm trying what, to think of a good th- argument but i can't what, as to why it's bad that there's two as opposed to one except that it's just mildly annoying to have two things what what is the nature of this outrage i'm a little bit confused so like you know the ever store exists and then people got mad somehow in the ether i mean wh- like wh- well do you... here's here's like the basic uh, gist i think is that okay. um the epic store is buying a lot of exclusivity deals with certain games and uh that means people are having to download the Epic client to play those games, and that's that's the extent of like the problem with that. I feel like I don't I don't really see how it could be like a big problem I mean, I, unless I you have really like a much... large Steam wallet that you want to hmm. purchase things with. There were some games that were promised on Steam that then it, it, there was at least one I forget what it was, uh, but Shenmue it was a big 3 game. Was the last big one. That, that was, was supposed to be on Steam, and then was like was people had Steam. bought it on Steam, but then they just moved it to Epic. And See, I think they right. funded everybody. Uh, but the first one that did that was a big one was Metro Exodus. There were That's a bunch the of one, pre-orders yeah. on so Steam. What, okay, so if they refunded everybody, I mean that is mm-hmm. like well, they very, didn't even refund like, them. If everybody who pre-ordered is still going to be able to play it on Steam. It's just going forward. You can only get it from the announcement point on Epic. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Well, then that's huh. even less. Doesn't sound so bad. Like it's it's one thing when like that. You bought it with the like the idea of it going on Steam, but like the only thing that that gives you really is an addition to your Steam library list, uh, Steam achievements and Steam trading cards and a lot of Steam bullshit that I really have never cared about at all. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, I don't know Steam friends and curation. Like the obviously St- the Epic Store is like new There's and it things. doesn't have a lot of stuff yeah, in no. it. But, like, I play games, I buy them to play them. I don't really go, you know, if if you think about it as, like, a metaphor for a store, mm-hmm. I don't go to the Steam store to be on Steam. I just go there to look at what's there. If there's something I want, I buy it, and then I play it. And the, the entire, like, community Steam stuff is, mm-hmm. like... Com- completely uninteresting and i don't give a shit so like i, I totally Epic agree. having I, a lack yeah. of that is not an issue for me like right. as as I, a pure I, like video mm. game store thing there's mm. nothing to be upset about really yeah i've done that i did a bunch true. of vlogs about this on i am games like a couple mm-hmm. like last month or so like when it started getting really hot and like my takeaway from it for me personally was like this is like the epitome of a first world problem you know to get bent out of shape problem, because you have though. to like move your mouse cursor over five five pixels to click on a different okay, launcher. Yeah. It's just like <laughs> not a big deal. And and I understand that people are inconvenienced by the idea of like, oh, like I am invested in the Steam ecosystem and now there are these games that I want to play that I can't play on Steam. And to be clear, to, to that. be clear though, yeah. these are not permanent exclusivity. It's a six month to one year exclusivity period and then they can go on steam so if video games don't matter after the first six months though they yeah, become if, if irrelevant you, and, and that in that case you shouldn't even fucking buy the game in the <laughs> first place if it's only good for six months you know like like fuck that mm, well, but but like the point. other i mean it's the, it's a bit more multi-layered because like the reason that a lot of these developers are moving to epic and taking the deal in the first place is not only the cash advance they get for signing an exclusivity agreement but like epics gives you way more money 
Like, if you're a developer, you get 88% as opposed to on Steam where you only get 70%. So they take right. a much smaller cut. And that's, I like, their big I want that draw. pressure to be on them to, to – I mean, as everyone knows, generally competition is a good thing. Drives What's down prices bizarre is that Steam and... has done nothing. In response to this, they have not made a statement. They have not They're tried to be more on competitive. It, maybe? They've just sat on their asses and done mm. nothing like they have done basically for the last five to ten years. Well, that's Gaben's MO in life in general. <laughs> uh, hey, here's here's a conceptual issue that I have uh, with this concept. That's not it's not really a major complaint, but it's like it's the things remain unideal and this does nothing to improve the situation. Uh, so Unique Name Asaurus made a couple of videos that I found reasonably interesting about piracy. Um, I don't know if I agree with every single thing he said, and I just haven't watched him in a while. But there was one point that he said that was that was pretty cool, or that, that I agreed with, or at least made sense to me. That was like, uh, so where he was talking about like anime releases and like, like um, exclusivity deals with various licensing companies. Um, so like if you have ex ex exclusivity deals for any given show, like for example, Evangelion is finally out in the West. And I think it's net. No, it's it's a uh, yeah. Netflix has it ex uh, solely, I think. And it's kind of oh my fucked god, up. guys! Evangelion yeah. is on Netflix. I can finally watch it. Dude, I actually I could, went. And I could I, never I, watch Ava before, but now I can watch. Some people it are too it's dumb on to pirate. Fucking Netflix. Do you guys? I mean, know? I don't think you you could Ugh. buy it. I don't do, think it was on print anywhere. Do you guys know about yeah, love terrorism in Evangelion? Buying anime. Uh, no. What? Is that what? What about it? All right. I hope it's real. Uh, I was so, finishing a point, by the way. <laughs> oh, sorry. Continue. Continue. I'll okay. Go uh, all I was going to say was just, um, uh, like the, the 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 taking Evangelion as an example. It it actually is still a monopoly that doesn't allow for any of the kind of competitive forces that we would want to tr to like improve the product if you have these exclusivity deals because th there simply is no ability to compete and like like what you would yeah. want theoretically is like every service can produce the show and they can each like try to make it as, as presented as best as possible but I mean, exclusivity the, the perfect does not world allow is that like one all. where like the best service is the one that people go to well to bring well, like, like, and then and then yeah. like like if everybody could have ava uh, like if amazon had mm -hmm. ava and netflix had ava as just like just two it's not perfect but it's it's more than you know i mean like, for example if, if with... amazon had like fly mm -hmm. me to the moon in their version then people would be like yeah. oh i'm going to that one and there's, and there's, like, a new dub they used. Maybe the other service might use the old dub, and then we could see, like, oh, this did much better. That shows us that the people liked, you know, X more than Y, whichever one does better in that situation. It, yeah, like, that's the sort of thing that you would want, like, this kind of pr proliferation among different platforms to solve. But, but like, we have in no way done anything to fix that issue. And I, I don't have a solution, but, that like, that would be the main thing I would want something like this to solve. But it does not, at least the way it's operating I mean, currently. All, but then all, again, all, with, all, with Tom's point about it being a time exclusive, maybe that will eventually help. I mean, all you can really do as like a creative is to mm -hmm. be obstinate and not let people do stupid things, even if it means you're not going to get as much money. Like the guy True. who made Calvin and Hobbes. Like, yeah, no yeah. Ad adaptations ever, please. Mm -hmm. Ever. Mm -hmm. And that that's why Calvin and Hobbes has not been ruined. Um, not okay, that that's a cool idea. Happen, but you know, but now that he's dead, uh, which I assume he is, uh, let's work with his 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 estate and get a Garfield crossover with Calvin and Hobbes movie on the big screen. As, I as, think there's as a, lot a of massive fan there. of Calvin and Hobbes, that idea repulses me. <laughs> I mean, who's to say Hobbes is not Garfield? <laughs> exactly. The people will eat it up. Lasagna and whatever Calvin and Hobbes were into in their Tuna comics. Uh, Breakers? Sledding. Lasagna on a sled. Yes. That's the, that's the Ooh, name on of the On a lasagna show. pan. He could sled in a lasagna pan. It's perfect. <laughs> Excellent. I already want to end this podcast. This is horrifying. <laughs> Uh, but um, anyway, well, okay, here's, Munch, okay, to, to, oh, yeah, before yeah, before on. we pivot away, uh, to, to yeah. the interesting thing about uh, a perfect ideal world, like a perfect ideal service, Gog, mm -hmm. uh, the under yes. the underdog oh, hero, yes. yep. the greatest service of all them. time, no DRM. They have yep. stepped up to the plate, and they're like, "Hey guys, we're going to make a new application." Uh, for Gog Galaxy, which is like their version of Steam, but they're mm -hmm. they're completely revamping it, and what it's going to do oh. is it's going to tie into Steam and epic so you launch gog and you have access to your steam your epic mm -hmm. and your Ooh, gog now all talking. in one yes. place that's i really love delicious. that that that's the good shit because th those guys have always seemed to be like yeah we just want this to be good 
Like the, the, the reason they started was mm-hmm. all these old games that they wanted to play, they just couldn't play. They, it's really difficult to get a fucking working version of Populous the Beginning yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I loved that game and it was like, oh my god, GOG, they care. They care about this sort of thing. They care about like making the games uh, accessible and, you know, uh, easy to use. And, you know, I, I'm sure they're big into archiving. It's just it's just a nicer Probably. nicer feeling than and those those than guys Epic. are owned by um th- there's the CG project uh, red guys Correct. right the Witcher yeah, yeah. yeah. okay that, that's great that's great I I have such a deep fear of how games are continuously changing you know I was just thinking of the other day I was watching Matthew Matosis's um review uh, or his whatever his analysis playthrough of Dark Souls one and he made such a cool I mean what he highlighted a point that in the Storm of Shrines. Um, there is a, a famous wall jump that you can do near the beginning of the level that lets you get to you like... Demon Souls oh, Sorry, yes, that's oh, absolutely right. You, I'm you talking guys, about Demon you guys Souls. Watch, you guys been watching AGDQ? Not at all, not at all. Though I do, I go back after it's done and I check out things that are interesting to me. I, I only watched like one, I only watched like I might watch Kingdom Hearts 3 live. for fun or something. Uh, yeah. uh man... I no, love, wait, he I was love, mid-sentence. Yes, okay, uh, I cool, just and we can say, talk about that. Yeah, okay. That's fair. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, just I, I was just wanted to propose that as a potential venue for discussion. Sure. Okay. I, I have things to say about that, but, um, okay, so it was just, in, uh, uh, Gib was right, it, it was his Demon Souls playthrough, there's a wall in Shrine of Storms that you can jump over, and it was not intended to be there by the developer, um, and, but people use it to skip, bit, like, two-thirds of the entire route, which, if you play Demon Souls, it's, like, a huge thing, you should not be able to do it, but you can, with this exploit, and Miyazaki, you know, creator, whatever, Dark Souls man, was, was asked, like, hey, uh, in an interview, which Matthew highlighted, it's like, uh, if you were making the game, like, originally, would you have kept that there, or would you have, like, removed it? He's like, if I was back in time making it then, I would have removed it, but I would never remove it now, because it's a part of, like, the ecosystem, and it's part of the identity of the game, which is this whole thing I always talk about, how art is created and then shown, and so you need to preserve that vision, and I'm so terrified of our modern day of, like, patching things and removing little things like that that add personality yeah. and color to games. Oh, I feel so much is being lost to time, and it's very sad. Kind of like the whole World of Warcraft vanilla thing. How that you... just got patched, and they brought back vanilla recently. Oh, is that cool. recent? Is it out now? Uh, I, yeah, I think it's out it's now. Pretty sure. Out. It, I, mean, I don't, I don't think like it comes out until like August. There's like okay, a closed but, beta but that soon. people are playing. Soon, yeah. This is this is responding to those people's concerns, and frankly, I kind of feel bad for maybe there's like a couple people out there who loved like vanilla plus like one patch. They thought like that was the best version of the game, but like where where's their you know right. non vanilla yes. vanilla plus one? Version? I mean, it, it's, it's, great, it's a sad great feeling knowing that I will mm-hmm. never be able to play what I perceive to be the best era of Team Fortress Two again. Like I exactly. I have this exactly. game in my. Steam Team library called Team mm-hmm. Fortress 2 and it functions oh, yeah. much the same way that the game that I used to play does but with such minor tweaks that just uh, here and there over and over and over again that make it feel weirdly alien to me even though uh, mm-hmm. on the face mm-hmm. of it almost all of it is the same I just, and I you know the thing about these games time. the thing about these games is I- I'm aware that like this is a trade-off we're, we're sacrificing, like, preserving history, I guess, for, like, the ability to upgrade games, which is a fantastic ability. It's true. Um, but, you know, like, all, all I'm lamenting is the thing that's being lost This there, is kind of why I, I don't yeah. want physical copies of games to go away. Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, with a physical disc, like, the 1.0 is burned mm-hmm. to the disc. So I'm a you coward and a weakling, and I buy digital, but I should buy physical for that exact reason. Well, but then it's, again, it's, a, with it's our, annoying, like, our... though, because um, yeah, yeah. sometimes you put, like, if it's a PS3 or PS4 game, um, I mean, I guess you can turn the internet off, but if you put a disc in, it will say, ah, oh, this is the w- version 1.0 version of the game. It will require you to upgrade you have to before you can play. Before, yeah, yeah, and it will just patch all this yeah. new stuff onto it. Th- that's just, that's a symptom of this larger, like, they're sure. just like, everyone's online, you have to be able to upgrade. But just having know? the disc gives you the option of going back I to the 1.0 if true. you want yeah. to. Whereas the digital Theoretically. kind of fucked. Uh, something just, to mention I mean, about the World emulators. of Warcraft thing, though. As much as I want to give mm-hmm. Blizzard Activision credit... For for listening to people, never they forget did, that Jontron video where they uh, where they, they did shut those boys down. Go on stage 
tell everybody you don't want this at all. And then when oh, people, yeah. when people I made, forgot about that. when people made fan like uh, versions of, of these vanilla servers, they litigated and shut them down only to turn around and monetize exactly what the fans were doing for free anyways. So, I mean, oh, they, they have the right to do that legally. Do, like, I get the business you, incentive. You're but still, you're still the, a bit the, of a cut. It makes them, it, it, they're very much like the guys running World of Warcraft. They weren't the original guys who made it at the, you know, yeah, they're, yeah. they're sort of like, the the story writers have been like kind of stupid over time but it's like yeah. um they clearly don't have the same reverence for the original game as the people who play it the game y- yeah they're just sort of yeah. like up their own ass i mean a few even of people I, I who make a game like, even the original like they're they have a very different experience of like the people who first played it like this demon souls example man i just I, it, it annoys me on such a this actually ties into just like the ff7 remake thing people just look at the they think they understand that like they they look at a vanilla wow versus like new wow and they're like what's the difference it looks the same to me because they weren't there man they weren't in the trenches they didn't experience what it was like to be part of that community and i would never speak to like what the vanilla wow community was like compared to like the new people because i don't fucking know but i do know about some things like like ff7 and to people who just say like shut up it's like gonna it's then you know it's shut up I guess just to, to f- just to consume product and then be consume excited product. for next product at, I, least, like, at, at least, least when people make the argument that like it's it's an up it's well not even i won't use the word upgrade because that implies positivity people will say like it's it's a reimagining it's a new version for new players i mean that's at least that's like an honest argument you can make that like okay sure so we're we're admitting that it's totally changing tons of shit and that's you know i need to just deal with that or not play it at least okay in the i case, can i can have that discussion at least in the case though of ff7 like yeah it's not an online always connected game so you can always True. go back and play you know the ps1 version thank god for that thank god for that imagine if I this was like, like oh wow ff7 players. was always connected online and now it's just become this you know but games are gonna be like that more and more yeah I every mean, stadia every, like, is if yeah. that becomes successful we're all again fucked. Again, it's this this man. comes down to artists being obstinate and refusing to bow yes. down to sing to things like this. If I ever make a game, I mean, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. If I ever make a game Do and it. I want it to stay how it is, I will definitely always have the original version, uh, like, um, accessible. Like, yeah. if I have a website like Download Patch 1.0. I mean, Minecraft does that, and that's great for Minecraft. You can that, download that these Minecraft's original. Surprisingly alpha. incredible about it for such like a big company like Microsoft. Fucking, they are uh, surprisingly They probably just kept that ethos. It. I mean, I I don't know for sure, but like based on the way that Notch made it originally, he seemed like uh, a kind of guy who cared about that sort of thing. They probably maybe, kept. Maybe that he in place. like had something in the contract when he sold Mojang. He's like, no, Hopefully. you got to keep this shit up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you know, the thing is. Uh, guys, to everybody out there, I, ex former professional programmer, uh, work with a ton of like it is so common for like people to preserve old versions of software because they know that like when you're doing like professional, I don't know, like engineering work or whatever, you've got like old software you need to be able to support. And after a while, it's true, things can get phased out and not supported by like newer releases. Like we have all this engineering software, we did. Uh, that like would connect with each other and you have to make sure that your versions are compatible and that was always a headache but you can always go back and get like you know the old old versions of things they still exist and all i'm advocating for is that we preserve that for like games as well uh if possible that'd be it wouldn't even be hard frankly you just have to have the code have the fucking data available to people to download people are smart we can figure it out the problem is like these companies don't see games as art to be preserved like they're they're, it's just business and so they don't care like why preserve this thing when we can just turn around and resell it to you in 10 years it kind of reminds me of like it's a little bit like how apple feels such a need to control all their patents and data and versions of everything and like i understand that from a business side but the cost is like people's ability to i don't know like it's a black box you can't get in there and see what's being changed and I don't know, make tweaks or something. Maybe people can. I'm no expert on, on Apple products or services, it's but this is difficult. my understanding. Yeah. Nothing's built to last anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't Planned know. Planned obsolescence. Planned obsolescence. Planned, Planned obsolescence. obsolescence. Planned obsolescence. Put that on a shirt. <laughs> Speaking of planned obsolescence, all I was going to say was I was listening to 
uh, H3H3's interview with um, Vsauce God. briefly the other day. Oh. And speaking of planned obsolescence, he, as as basically a futurist himself, I was I was encouraged to see that he agrees with me that immort immortality for human beings is probably not a good idea from like a growth of the species perspective. Not because I want people to die. That is unfortunate and a moral bad thing that happens. But it, it is a pragmatic step to make sure that ideas are continually evolving and to not go go Krypton. Because that's what happened in Superman. That's why Krypton went to shit. Because everybody, uh, like, lived forever and their society was stagnant and shit. But uh, just just saying that, that was, that was pretty cool. I never watched Vsauce, but after that, I was like... I could, I could, I could get into this man. If, if you like, if you like Michael, if, if, no, if you, like never. If you like mm. Michael, but you don't like Vsauce, uh, mm -hmm. you should check out Ding, formerly Dong, uh, which is oh yeah, uh, I uh, should do that. A, a YouTube channel where he just shows off weird like maths toys and is like really funny because he's a creepy crazy man. I love him. He's great. He he is creepy, and I love the when it, when he like, talks weird in Vsauce. It's kind of like off putting because it feels so. I don't know, like. But what I what I want him to be is like my weird uncle who talks funny and you know like do his weird he, eyebrow he raises. He really and... <laughs> he uh, really plays into that on Ding like um like the being the that. creepy uncle like crazy man <laughs> excited about stupid math shit and he's oh, like oh I love him he he did a, a video in April and he said well Christmas mm -hmm. is almost you know nearly around the corner and I thought it would be a great mm. time to talk about this thing that has nothing to do with Christmas he just made it a Christmas <laughs> episode for no reason. Oh, see, it's funny. It's good. I like it a lot. Uh, he really won me over with this one clip on the H3 podcast. Way to go, Vsauce. Is there a guy named, like, Vsauce 3? Are there, like, multiple right. versions yes. of this There's man? V Vsauce Michael is the only good one. Vsauce okay. uh, Jake uh, and Vsauce, <laughs> and Vsauce uh, Paul. Uh, uh -huh. I don't remember their names. Oh, Kevin or something. Are, and they're do you both say they're like, shit, Munchie? They're shit. Okay. I say they're good shit. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, I believe like you. Vsauce three is Jake, and he went on. He went full Jontron and making like a big like uh -oh, set. Racially? And <laughs> no, no, he, he 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 had like this video, which was basically a very basic Vsauce video about like some mm -hmm. very understandable stuff. But mm -hmm. he like obviously spent like thousands of dollars on a set and costumes and things, oh. and it didn't get a lot of views. And he that got depressed, and he was like. Man, you just didn't need to do all of that stuff. You were you did weren't he, talking about anything operations? very interesting. I I don't know what's going on with him. Okay. Uh, okay. The last I saw, he was like working with Casey Neistat on something. But that I was going to say ago. working at KFC. Got to pay back Casey Neistat. Things somehow. are going pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. What well, one content um, creator I I quite mm -hmm. cherish, which I feel is almost awkward and embarrassing to admit, because he's popular and therefore mm. the subject I'm, of I'm uh, must needed yeah. ire, uh, is uh, I I I listen to and I follow CGP Grey a lot, and so I hear him oh, talk about he's rubbing good. shoulders with all these sorts of people about Vsauce and and all the different versions and, and clones of Vsauce <laughs> going to VidCon yeah. and and about how he knows and interacts with these people. And it's uh, it, it's interesting to hear it from the horse's mouth because I I don't really interact with any YouTubers that we consider popular outside of him. So yeah. Yeah. and because he's a reclusive guy himself, it's sort of like uh, two layers of filteredness that I'm just hearing about these mm -hmm. demigods on Earth who could bend people to their will instantaneously if they requested <laughs> it. Did you ever uh, see that? Uh, you ever see that Bill Wirtz clip? You know the I just did a bad thing. Everybody knows Bill Wirtz. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, when he was he accepted like a Webby or whatever yes, it was. Yes, and just yes. seems so like not. No, no. For, I, I a little bit Dude, judge totally anybody who mean. even goes to these. I mean, I would go too if I was him. But he just, man, he's still, he's one of us, dude. He didn't give a fuck about this award. Or he was like, thanks, and then he peaced I mean, out. I, I've always like loved the <laughs> idea of like not doing that exact thing. Yeah, yeah. Like just saying. It reminds thanks. me of you a little bit, musician, freak of nature. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Disturbing yeah, yeah, to look upon. Know. Yeah, that's I can think it's what happened. Gib Gib goes up, wins <laughs> wins his Webby. Uh, just goes up there in his I'm just being cool T-shirt and just like ah uh, yes, hmm. of course. Just a little nod, a little. Hmm. And then just goes and proceeds away. to dab on look, all look, the look. haters at once. That's the way. God. Let me know imagine, when the last it, shrug the first, gets uh, first seven, the, 27 million views. And then there will be the true Bill Wirtz <laughs> yeah, testing. Yeah. 
Imagine uh, the on. first like dab at the Oscars. <laughs> I bet it's probably it's already, already happened. happened. Yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, God, I hope it's me again. Hey, you know, speaking of AGDDGQ, the mm-hmm. this fast gamer dot com, um, uh, I have like trouble watching. Well, I don't have trouble watching speedruns. But like, I always like to watch a speedrun like I of games that I played as a as a youngin because Absolutely. obviously when you're a youngin you're stupid and you don't That's... play games really fast. But That's then pretty... yeah. it it turns out that all the games like PS2 games of that era, um, you can't really play them fast and a lot of things you can't skip. So like I I look up a speed uh, you know speedrun of like Sly Cooper two, uh, yeah world record like five hours long like that's not fun same with like yeah like ff7 or kingdom Hearts 2 they're like eight hours long or something it's like uh, i mean all i mean all my childhood favorites are pretty good speed run stuff it's mostly like snes stuff so yeah, uh, yeah that, that's like the golden era like watching i was watching the um the secret of mana speed run the other day i've been replaying it with the new collection on switch which is pretty cool mm-hmm. I'll, I'll play uh i'll play the sequel legend of Mana, whatever it's retitled or something um and, uh, like, w- specifically watching them do things, first of all, when you're young and you play a game, you're probably just gonna miss a lot of, like, mainline content. I know I did. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Watching, like, Mario RPG or Secret of Mana, it's like, oh my god, there's all these things I didn't know about. That's pretty dope. And then also just watching them just break the game wide open with, like, these, especially if it's, like, not not glitchless, but, like, if they don't hack the game, they just use whatever, you know, mechanics are available to them. It's like, wow, so cool. I want to do that too someday. I could be a strong boy. <laughs> and uh, I, I could now probably beat Secret of Mana in a couple couple hours shorter than intended with a couple of these tricks I've learned. Uh, watching games where they make heavy use of glitches, like like Nintendo 64 games, mm-hmm. is always like makes me feel like weirdly like how could you make a game this poorly even though i know that these are yeah. like professionals who have spent their entire lives to break these beloved games they were which held for, together. for all um, intents and purposes function completely do you fine. ever watch do you ever mm-hmm. watch the uh summoning salt like history of i yeah, love absolutely. those yes. absolutely. yeah yeah like like the parts where like he'll explain the mechanism like like um like how like everyone was looking for a long time for a way to skip the bridge to Ganon's castle in Ocarina of Time, I think. Oh yeah, uh, and then yeah. like the final, a, like a an like incredibly esoteric fucking me- method was discovered. Uh, oh, that's you know, good and stuff. it just changed. It changed the whole game. You, yeah, um, I, or or the way know, when it was finally discovered how you could beat Mario sixty four without collecting any stars, but the last one. Uh, yeah, that was the, great. The speedrunners are like the modern day equivalent of our ancient ancestors, like the ones that first discovered that you can plant <laughs> seeds and then uh, reap the the wheat. No, because it's fucking it's, dumb. <laughs> no, because it's like how would you possibly think to eat a berry? Or to like consume anything, like when you come it's into existence, and colorful, and you're like, mm. we got instincts, you know. We're based on no, listen, wild impossible, beasts. and that's what speedrunning is <laughs> like, you know. You just fl- backflip into the same wall over and over and over again. On the fiftieth yeah. one, you now <laughs> clip into the last level and instantly gain the star. That's what agriculture is like, you know. I mean, you're a human <laughs> out in society, true. and then you just backflip into the ground over and over and over again. And soon <laughs> enough, your family is fed, and you're the king of a, a primitive society. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not like people just go into a game, like speedrunners or like hack ma- meisters go into a game and just like jump into shit. Uh, I mean, some obviously do just for fun. They find things. Yeah. But like, um, you know, Pan and Coic, the, the, uh, ro- the, 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 the famous man, rocks, watch for rolling rocks in 0.5 press A presses. Half a time, it doesn't work that way. Yes. Yeah, okay. like I I like I watch all of his videos, even the ones that are like really mathematical and like he you know, when he's just explaining how walls, floors and ceilings work and how they push mm-hmm. Mario like every frame. I still love and, that blue coins video. Ex- yeah, and and it, like all of these these things and it they they use like a system of like recording the game through an a specific emulating a thing so that they can look at the code that's running and see the numbers at, like in real time and so they can see uh like mm-hmm. visually without really having to jump into every wall what walls could be jumped through if you had right. enough speed and it's, the question is how to get enough speed or something and then they find a way yeah they, they, they break that so shit. You, I, you, you can hack into the mainframe to find secrets is what every I mean. 
every so True. often when I'm walking down the street, and this is real, uh, Kazzy can attest to this, uh, sometimes I've just, like, that gone That kid who no-clipped all the way to school. <laughs> well, I, I mean, else, I, I, mean you know? I, I've, like, pretended to no-clip through walls uh, <laughs> on many occasions, <laughs> where I'll just go up to the wall, turn back to it, and just go, I just, like, stop, stop. I think I've seen you do that. That kid whose dad worked at Nintendo do, do, and do had you do all like the, hacks. the backwards long jump, like Yahoo! <laughs> no, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> that kid who, uh, what is it? Back jumped up the stairs at light speed and got past the infinite staircase, aka the escalator going down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's good. Actually, right. there is that one clip of of a dude doing that that's like famously posted oh, or whatever. For it's real? Like a, oh my god! Well, okay, kind of. It's like <laughs> I, okay, I don't know if this is like reverse or footage. Possible. It's like it's like a dude. He like he does like a pose at the bottom of a staircase, and then like he like moves backward, and it, like his feet are moving in like a seemingly impossible way, and he's like going backwards up the staircase. And there's like a webm that's called like you know Mario Stair Glitch dot MP four dot MPEG dot webm or, or whatever it dot, is dot MPEG dot, <laughs> dot normal preg. <laughs> My favorite encoder dot NTR. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's all good. Um, hey, uh, well, I have a slight tangent, but uh, this is actually all very much in keeping with the subject that I wish to discuss today on this episode, um, which was the concept of uh, spiritual uh, successors, which kind of ties into like preserving history and uh, a little bit and all that, because I just beat um, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night for my Nintendo Switch. Hell yeah. Oh, you is... played it on the Switch? I've been hearing bad things about that version. It is not good <laughs> on the <laughs> Switch. There have been... Okay, I've had one fatal glitch where it just died, and I had to restart the game Whoa. and lost progress. So that's not good that that happened. I, I, I guess you backflipped into one too many walls, huh? <laughs> that's exactly. I went too many QPUs over and just lost track of who I was spiritually. Um, it. it uh, I, I, I have no basis for comparison. I don't know if it looks better on the PlayStation or on PC or anything. I gotta tell this game looks like ass. Videos, dude. I, you're, I should check those out, because I, I am actually curious, because I got, man, this game looked horrible, in my humble opinion. Uh, like, it, specifically, like, the color design, I thought was quite bad, and the models were not very impressive, and, like, all the animations were, you know, they were, like, fine, and all that. And it, because it was, it wasn't sprites, it's 3D models in, like, a 2.5D perspective or whatever. Uh, just, like... Quite unattractive. Uh, like all the enemies look bad. I, I have I miss the sprites intensely. Sprites are infinitely better compared to this. We're still in this awkward transitionary phase. Like I get why they did it in 3D, but not great. Uh, there was a bunch of I- Iga posted a video like a month ago or whatever about like we improved the visuals. Yeah, to me, I, I, I saw I, that. That it was, didn't okay. look very impressive. I, uh, <laughs> I, I I'm not I, I've not been like following this game very yeah. closely whatsoever. I knew of its existence and mm-hmm. I knew that people didn't like the way that it looked. I had never seen it before, uh, and then I watched that video of him yeah. rather like I don't, like. Pompously saying, the, like, yeah. oh, listen, you haven't seen my true form. Listen, we've listened to criticism, and here it is. We've unveiled the new graphics. As and to me, they looked tell, as bad as what I was imagining that people, like, like, like what he, I imagined looked like from what people were saying. It, like, it looked to me, it looked terrible. like they, like, they, like, applied filters and maybe updated some of the, um... Uh, some of the textures, I mean, probably a lot of them, but like the models were the same, the animations were all the same, which, and both of those I don't really care about. The models were pretty ugly and clunky. Okay, none of this is to my main point, uh, because while there were I, there were many graphical glitches, there were many kind of gameplay glitches, like items would get stuck in walls, and sometimes it was kind of weird when enemies dropped them, and again, I had one game-breaking glitch where it stopped, I had to restart the game. The thing is, though, I loved the game, because um, I really don't give much of a fuck about... Like it, like it reminded me of that uh, Samus Returns remake for the 3DS or whatever. Like <laughs> there was a 3DS game about on par with this fucking Switch game in my in my mm-hmm. estimation. And you know this is made by Kickstarter. I-, I haven't gone over the numbers to judge. Like okay, was my experience good enough to justify the amount of money they make? Like have they given their backers rewards? And those are all valid concerns, which I'm not even dismissing. My point simply is that like I have been a huge. Uh, Castlevania, specifically Egovania fan for a million years, ever since I played um, Castlevania fucking Circle of the Moon on GBA way back in the day. I loved them ever since. Played Dude, every does, Egovania that does, exists. Does history still like Egovanias? Has has the worm turned I think on those? They get a bad rap con- I think these they're days. contentious. 
from what, from yeah. what I understand. I, I, I feel like for a while, I, definitely like, Symphony really of the nice. Night was like the best game on PlayStation. Everyone loved its shit. And Everyone there was still a million imitators. Me. I feel like maybe yeah. were, like the years and years of imitators soured people on the whole formula a little bit. I think that's probably think, a large part of it. I think Raptor kind of started turning that when he did the sequelitis on Castlevania and kind of shit on the RPG ones and saying that the classics were better. I think that kind of started shifting that's the understandable. in a big way. Yeah. Mm. You know what? Now that I've now that I've I've played a lot more games since I played. I mean, uh, whatever. I played um, uh, Order of Ecclesia in college, which was where you play Shinoa. That was like the last um, like real Castlevania game, um, and or the last e- main Egovania. There's been a couple like Lords of Shadows, piece of shit. Don't care. No interest. Tried them. Terrible. Um, and this one was the next. This is like really the continuation. So so it's a spiritual successor, right? Castlevania is basically dead. At least the game, the style of game that I cared about that Konami used to make. Konami, whatever. They're not making video games anymore, basically at all. That's fine. So it's up to the little guys to make it with Kickstarters and, and whatever we got. Played the game. I beat it. But I beat the game like an hour before we started filming. I beat like the true final boss, and I'm at. Like 99.8% map completion. And I've been trying to find that last 0.2% and it's pissing me off. I can't fucking find what room I missed, but that's okay. I am loving it. Oh, and and I was going to say to someone's point about like the old games being better. It is very much on my mind that I'm able to like RPG style brute force many of the uh, bosses in this game that like I'm not using skill. I'm using like stats and yeah. the ability to just use potions. And so that's pretty embarrassing uh, to realize I'm doing that. But whatever, man, <laughs> I, I'm just loving the game overall. Maybe I'll do like uh, a hard mode. You talking about the bloodstains? Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Okay. What was the other one? The like NES version one? That was oh, a that promo was, uh, for this, wasn't it? Yeah, was, and I also there was Curse I of the actually Moon, right? Curse that's right. It's like Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. I I got that game as well. I played it all the way through and that's like a classic NES. I got to the final boss and like died on it a couple times and I was like, I'll come back and beat this later. I feel like I basically got 100% out of it though I didn't quite beat the final boss. So I, I'm a relatively an expert on Bloodstained stuff now. I've played the two games that exist for Yeah, it. you could say I'm an epic gamer. I'm, uh, I'm going to go for yeah. at least 100% completion of the map, but I mean, that's that's very little left to do. Okay, but none of this is to my point. My mm. point is, um, I respect the effort that made Bloodstain. I legitimately, I'd use the word loved because it's so nostalgic, the idea of exploring the castle, completing the map, getting these power-ups. I mean, I, and I love Metroidvanias. They're like my favorite genre, if you want to call them that. Um, but it it makes me feel nervous about the future of games because the the point I want to make about them is like I like Konami, big company, lots of people. They said like fuck video games, they're not sustainable anymore. You know, whatever. We're not going to emphasize them at least the way we used to. And so the Egovania, like the man behind them, uh, you know, the Egovania style, it's like okay, well, I'll I'll take care of it. It strikes me as almost hopeless. I feel hopeless about the future of games because it was like. It's it's very rare for a game like Bloodstain to be created, and it seems far more common for things to just go away and never come back. Um, in my experience, and mm. I don't know. I feel I again loved the game, but it just made me think like, oh, I wish this happened more. I wish this seemed like a a like realistic hope for the future that there would you mean, be more. But, I mean, there've been well, a ton. There've well, been a ton of Metroidvanias that have come out over the last. Couple yeah, and of years. and what we were just saying, well, like the the uh-huh, fact that uh-huh. they were uh, constantly iterated upon, sort of eventually made people get tired of the genre. Well, true. How, I how mean, much, I'm how even... much iteration is too much iteration? I think how how many more iteration? I, well, I, I can only play like one video game before I'm just sick of the whole medium. And I, <laughs> I'm and not, frankly, I, I'm not even specifically like this goes to what we were discussing before. I'm not specifically talking about Metroidvanias. Like Metroidvanias okay. are like Hollow Knight came out like two years ago, like best game I've played in years. Uh, Would this you say came out, that Hollow Knight is with more them. of actually no? I guess it is more of a Metroid a Metroid like than a than a Castlevania, isn't it? I mean, I, you, I definitely just like put it level in up. that. You level up That's by true. getting That's health true. upgrades and and things like that. But you don't you don't get like XP to spend. Uh, unlike some people, I find the Metroidvania label to be very useful, and so I'm happy to apply it to I, both. I, I, like, I, like, I, I know I what like you're talking to... about when you say it. <laughs> Indeed. I, Indeed, I know what you're talking about, but I I do prefer the the distinction between Castlevania and the Metroid. 
just there, just I mean, because there, there anything a, with XP feels there a lot is a different. Distinction. Sure, I mean, like the ability to, gr- to the ability to grind through an area to get more powerful is like a big gameplay difference. It, it it is a big gameplay difference, and actually, one of the things that I love about like uh, uh, Aria of Sorrow Castlevania did the thing that I love most about like Egovanias and Bloodstains did this, Order of Ecclesia did this, um, Portrait of Ruin I think did this. It's become, at least I think Portrait of Ruin did. It's become way more popular as time has gone on. Yeah, Portrait d- did do it. And it's the like, it's the thing that uh, even Symphony of the Night didn't do. And so I think this is an improvement. It's that like every enemy in those games can give you like the power of that enemy. So the game, be- it's not just like where Symphony of the Night, you got to get through the game, find like the totems that have like the, 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 what, the relics or whatever that you need to access certain powers. I like better in the new game. It's like the enemies feel like a real important part of the game because every single enemy drops a soul or a, a shard or in this game or like whatever, a sigil or something that gives you a specific power. And so it's like, oh, wow, I can really like connect and kind of even role play if I want to well, that, as that, like a specific is, like did, did, magic I did, user. I did like that in when they, I mean, they did, what was it? Was, was it Aria of Sorrow they did that in? Yeah, Aria yeah, of Sorrow. That was, that was, that, that was pretty cool. A lot of the abilities were bad. A, a ton or, of them were shit. I totally a lot of them, agree. And a lot of them were just reskins of other <laughs> is, ones. Is but, it like, like that's Kirby, still, the way you're describing it? But still. The, the, what, it was, what's fun it, about it, it though, sort of, is... The fact that it sort of turned it into a collect-a-thon. Yes. It, like, yes. It's sort of like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta catch them all. Yeah, I, I mean, the great, thing about, the great thing about yeah, a system yeah, like too. that is mm-hmm. that it, it, it kind of gives the grinding a higher purpose because like exactly. you're doing a lot of back- exactly. backtracking in these games and that I, it's actually i just re-released a video on ion games talking about uh this in mm-hmm. relation to metroid because like this is something right, I I think want to metroid watch that. totally misses is that mm-hmm. when you're going back and forth in metroid uh the enemies are just impediments like they don't they don't give you anything yes. So like when you're doing your backtracking in those games, it's just like, oh, I gotta get past. What all this crap. is your incentive right. to kill any enemy in Metroid? There's literally none. Exactly. Literally none. And in Castlevania, there's always like new abilities and like all these enemies Dude, could even potentially if, give you something. So it's like e- even above just the fact of killing them to get experience, which can cap out, um, and to get their soul just so you have the power. There's there's a I think a very important system of you can level up the souls if you get more souls from a certain enemy, it powers it up. So you feel like every enemy you kill has real like weight to it and is actually improving your character and i gotta say that's to me that's one of the best things you can do uh and e- e- like even if the game I, I don't know like Ho- hollow knight like for example Pokemon go <laughs> i mean g- g- kind of like that like, hollow knight for example doesn't have exp but it does have money and money is very important but later in the game you can run out of money or you you can buy everything you need to buy and then you know you hit that wall of there's nothing to grind for anymore but a game like this i'm just i'm not saying it's perfect i could understand why people like other systems differently but that is a a relatively unique benefit of, of having this system in place I, i've caught I, so many weedles i don't know, I can't even <laughs> count them at this point but every single time i do them i get candy and then i can transfer them and then i can upgrade my weedles and the cocoonas then i can upgrade my cocoonas into yes. bee drills i get that I, sweet sweet exp every single time there, <laughs> i want to catch every pokemon i i do see the appeal of like mm-hmm. killing enemies in your way being uh, beneficial in some small way with mm-hmm. XP or, or something, but there's something. As long as it's something. There's something maybe specifically about the Metroid games that I enjoy, mm-hmm. that like the platforming and like the 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 ice beam and the the speed at which you can dodge past enemies or the the, the powers that allow you to just jump and screw mm-hmm. attack kill enemies just sort of like makes the obstacles less of a you know it's more fun. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go so I'm far as you. to say it's more fun, but like I definitely prefer the feeling of progression through being able to easily and nonchalantly smash or dodge or run past enemies that were once big annoyances. Well, there's definitely a lot of mobility upgrades you get in most Castlevanias too, which is which is to this point, which I very much enjoy. L- let me just give you one highlight, which actually it, you could do something like this exactly in a Metroid or a Hollow Knight, and there there are moments like it, but but it's what I love. It's that you can get to the end of the game in Bloodstained. Uh, I guess this is minor spoilers, but nothing nothing major. Just a small little fun thing I, I liked, part of the progression. It's that early in the game, there's just a big blood fountain. And you wa- and it just seems like a set piece. And it's like, oh, wow, this is a uh, you know, spooky you know, vampire castle or whatever. Big blood fountain. Um, and if you look on the map, you can see that there's actually a hole 
at the bottom, but you can't get through that hole. And it's like, hmm, I wonder what that's about. That that definitely is going to be something later. It's a symbolism for my incel lifestyle. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Damn. But, so later in the game, <laughs> later in the game, me. you, you got to find new ways to progress a to hole, like explore. A hole covered in blood? Think about it. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes gotta sense. Throw up. Th- there's, okay, a, there's a vampire. <laughs> there's a vampire lady, and it specifically said that like, hey... Uh, you know, there's a, there's a vampire who can, like, absorb blood without even sucking on you, without even, like, touching you. She can suck your blood. How does that work? So you go hunt her down, and you kill her, and you get her soul or her shard or whatever, and it lets you, like, absorb blood from enemies. So now, if you're ever up against an enemy, you use this spell or whatever, and it just, boom, it sucks blood from them. You get healed. They take some damage. If they have blood, it doesn't work on, like, skeletons. So that, that's already pretty cool. But if you go to this one fucking place, the big blood pool, and you use the spell... Boom, you use the thing, and it's like a little thing. You absorb all the blood, and there, it's empty, and you got a place you can advance now, progress the game. It's awesome. You know what I like about that? Yeah. Is that that probably means that in the game, right, in, like, the game's enemy data, there is probably Mm -hmm. a tag that someone had to go through in every every monster entry and manually Mm -hmm. edit to specify has blood, does not have blood. (laughs) That's a super specific ability, like whether or not you can drain blood from them. So yeah, everybody, every enemy probably has that switch toggled. And it should, like... I, I basically 100% of the game in terms of exploration. I haven't done every little thing. Oh, uh, you know what? I'll just say while we're talking about blood, say we can move on. But like the moment I had after I beat the game, beat the true final boss, and I just came back because in the end credits, I noticed that I see there's a there's a, a, a little image of Miriam sitting at a piano with a little familiar uh, that you get throughout the game. It's this little like pink pixie thing, cognazo or something, which I think means like song or something. Um, and she's sitting at a piano playing it, and I'm like, I remember that piano. I never did anything with that piano. I tried to play it, but she did I'm, I'm gonna go back and do that. So I go, I equip the little pixie fairy. I equip, or I, I you know, I get she, um, fucking Miriam. I go to the piano, I sit down, and not only does Miriam start to play the piano, but the little pixie fairy starts to sing along in a, in a live action English voice, sing like a song to the main theme of Bloodstained, which is, that's just classic Egovania putting that stuff in. And by the way, I tested it. If you sit there and you play without the fairy equipped, she still plays the piano medley, but the, there's no voice singing along. But then if you equip the fairy, then it does sing along and you get mm. the, I was, that was the moment when I, I, I reflected cool. at, at this moment of, of like even figuring out the difference between having the fairy and not having it. I reflected on like, wow. This game was awesome, and I had such a great but time playing I, it. I love I, these I details. I sat back in my chair, and I said, maybe va- video games can be art, after all. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Ben, I, was, I, was, I felt lots of gratitude, and it was, a great, it was a great game. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Ben, something you just said remind me of something in my own life. When you were saying that you had to tag every single enemy if it has blood or doesn't have blood, that reminds me of, of yeah. something that you may relate to. Uh, I, I was doing my favorite activity just earlier today, and that's duplicating code unnecessarily and cluttering <laughs> yes. up a uh, mini a, a <laughs> Python file. Excellent. My, uh, that's my favorite, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, so I, I had joy, uh, much like, you know, tagging if blood do this. I was tagging if uh, uh, if dismembered limb of slime Zodia, then add to this <laughs> unwrap trading card pack uh, uh, function. Uh, is that true? Uh, yes. How much of this is made? Okay, no. Ben. Wait, are we are we, are we are we getting are we getting um um uh, sea creatures? Uh, indeed, we are, Ben. Uh, so it's not a no. A, a... <laughs> oh, no. And by no, I mean and by no, I mean. Yes. <laughs> so, so, so it's it's not a a, a playable game, but the trading cards uh, are there, and you'll be able to uh, assemble slime Zodia and smelt it together for some what disastrous <laughs> results. What happens then? I want to know. Well, well, uh, I'll, I'll have you know that even if you are a a goon of uh, mm-hmm. GitHub sorts, you will not be able to understand or to read the flavor text I have written for oh the God. forbidden one 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 or the forbidden. Oh. Oh. Stuffed crust that you can uh, <laughs> that you can smelt by smelting together 128 double stuffed crust pizzas. You will not be able to read it because Why I put it in a I, I put it in a uh, specific uh, off like an off uh, GitHub python file that i've given exclusively to magic so you will have to literally get it in game in order to understand and to read the flavor text or else you will not be able to read it. Yeah. So uh, okay, this cool. is an announcement. Click on the link in the description. Pretty- do it. Do it now. 
do it yeah, now. Yeah, is it on is it on slimecorp.net? No, uh, no, they have not, listen. They, they they don't own they don't own the scan. They don't own everything that happens in it. This this is not they. That's they what you own think. Well, the city. well, I'll have I'll have to send them a memo and we can fix that. <laughs> Uh, oh. yeah, Ben, Hey, listen, hey, d- come back, oh, okay, go please, on. God, um, come back. I was, you know, I've been, you know, I, I turned out The Last Vapors 3, and I've been working on, like, commissions and stuff. I think, I, I gotta, I gotta, like, draw a cover for Vapors 2 before the Kickstarter and stuff. Oh, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe after that, I'll, like, take a step back and just, and, like, go back to coding for a while. That sounds like it could be a... Y- you, you kind of change of pace that I need. Code, you just you, you know, you just gotta put in some FaceTime, you know. I Wait want, a minute, I I've want, got I I've got a code, controversial though. subject sure. to bring up regarding this, uh, and it's Ben. I was just thinking about this, oh, no. um, and I was just wondering what the hell took oh, so God. long to get a new chapter out. I, I was trying to crunch the numbers to see when the last chapter had come out, and uh, interestingly, this is a big call out I'm about to do. I couldn't yeah. help but go to go your Patreon, it. which I noticed your Patreon exists specifically to finance creation of these comics. So I was that thinking, is, like that is the stated that mm-hmm. is the stated goal. On and there, I, yeah. I, I now I do not back you or anyone on Patreon or anywhere else because I'm a hero. Um, <laughs> but however, mm. Michelle does, and I was encouraging Michelle and all her her cohorts to to grill you and to force you into submission to produce faster content. Um, do you know how long it's been since, like, the last chapter or whatever came out? Yeah, don't, yeah, you, you think I haven't thought about this? I, I'm, I was saying I'm sure you have. I'm sure you think about it more than anybody okay. else, but nonetheless. Um, uh, it was like, um, well, you, you're talking about since Vapors 2? Uh, I, I was thinking, like, since your last, you know, big comic release, which I guess would be, no, wasn't it The Champion was the most recent there, one? There, there was, well, there yeah. was, okay, there was The Champion, and mm-hmm. then there was Beastcapades, and True. then there was Endless War. So those Nobody are loves thing- Beastcapades more than me. Oh, I forgot those about Endless some- War. That's true. Yeah, those are those are things that happened in the interim. Yeah, I know. I know when you um when you crunch the numbers, it comes out to like a like less than a page a week, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. which is bad. Um, but you know, tr- re- remember that that's that Vapors Three is not the only thing that was going on in that period. That's true. That's true. Although so that, if I was your patron, I would I would if, uh, you know, will, yeah, up I mean, the pledge I, I, insanely, I, Ben, <laughs> because I just loved Vapors Three. Thought well, I wasn't gonna no, go there. Did okay, you? but, but remember, I, I talked I talked about this the other day, or, or <laughs> yeah. I talked about this like like two weeks ago when I said like, you know, I had I had been working on Endless War a lot, and then I had realized like I'm pretty sure that like my my patron, ex- I mean technically if you if you patron me, you support anything that I do. Um, Is that but, what's stated there though? It, it, yeah, what's explicitly stated is that okay. it's about it's that it's for comics, and eventually I was like, you know, I'm pretty sure most of my patrons are patrons for the comics. Mm-hmm. This is why I'm like, I need to get a comic out. I need to get get the I next mean, comic. The done. reason this is on my mind is because I just did an update of of my Patreon, and I was like, I want to make. Sh- I mean, for me, it's I want to be super clear exactly what I owe these people, specifically so that no one can bother me if I'm, you know, as long as I'm mm-hmm. abiding by the agreement. I want there to be no room for anyone to to get on my case about anything. But I mean, as a non-patron of yours, I am just here selfishly demanding that you produce things faster for me because they're good and they're my favorite thing you do. And I want Beastcapades now, Ben. Now. Uh, soon. Okay, good. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> there you go. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, that's it. <laughs> All right, I have. Okay. I have did my due diligence to, to go back <laughs> thank, to go back to video you. games. Uh, there is of course. An, there is an article <laughs> that I stumbled upon on Twitter that blew my mind mm-hmm. to shit a few days ago. Um, yeah. So so you guys you guys know about Eve Online. You ever heard about Eve of Online? Yeah, oh, sure. I know that. Mm-hmm. That's like uh, people are very very heavily involved uh, <laughs> to the point of like yeah. having it's whole like societies. It's like literally within the game. another world. So there was mm-hmm. an article from PC oh, Gamer. Sh- shout out, Mr. Mr. Beatung. Mr. Mr. Beatung did a video. Was it specifically about Eve Online, or was it about emergent so. gameplay, or was it about was it the one about shandification? Ah, there's I one think of his it videos. Was that. Where he, it might yeah. be the shandification one. Go check that out. I don't please. know. There's one. There's one where he talks about emergent gameplay. and He talks about Eve Online and the war between. Oh fuck! There were the Band of Brothers and some the, the like, Band two, of Sisters. Two like <laughs> two like like player driven factions that were like not 
not actually part of the game at all. It yeah, was like yeah. purely a like user driven faction system that emerged that and like the war raged between these two factions for years and mm-hmm. it was sick. It's fascinating. Okay. It's yes. okay. The, the I I found this article on PC Gamer talking about something that happened a couple days ago in Eve Online and it doesn't mm-hmm. read like an article about a video game it reads like a wiki article on like an actual like piece of fiction but they're talking about like real people it's fucking insane okay. so i'm gonna i'm gonna link the okay. article right now yeah. but I will, I will attempt to summarize it the idea okay. here is that um you know most games like when they do a big content update they like make a big deal out of it at e3 and you wait like a year Eve Online mm-hmm. just sicked an entire alien race on the entire galaxy. Oh with, my god! <laughs> with no warning at all, people just woke Holy up shit. and half their shit was destroyed. And there was this oh huge my god. Uh, like, the Borg recently? fucking invaded yeah, three all three days once. ago. Yeah, it's basically the three Borg. Three days ago. And and there's okay. the article goes in on how like there was a huge like uh war going on between two faction, two player factions. They prematurely ended the war and ge- teamed oh, up yes. to start fighting the 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 fucking invaders. Like the, basically the, all of their like systems they had programmed to like keep track of like their bases and things because like, it's a huge fucking galaxy. None uh-huh. of it was even like coded with the understanding that npcs could trigger things like this so none of the like preparations for keeping their shit safe was prepared for this npc invasion and like the entire like population is in turmoil right now and it's fucking fascinating to think that something like this is like real and happening it's it's just like the most like interesting article to read through just like these people are like this guy's like a diplomat uh, for uh, this player faction, the Test Alliance and like the Imperium, and there's these huge big things, and like they have to like completely change how they're playing this game because there's this huge new third party that was not accounted for by anyone, like an, like an AI party. Yeah, right. And it's just like, yeah. and and like again, like Eve Online had the like the balls to be like, no one is gonna know this is gonna happen until it's too late. We're not gonna hype it up or anything. It's you know, just yeah. dropping. Not God, to that's be. So- just like an alien invasion would do. They wouldn't yeah, announce it. Exactly. Yo, let me just yeah. not to be overly uh like uh not to have overly high expectations for something like this, but this is in in uh Star Trek Deep Space Nine, the main premise of, of like I think it, it, episode one of Deep Space Nine, Commander Cisco takes over and a wormhole opens. And it's like it's all like a spiritual thing. There's some religious stuff going on. But but more importantly to me is that this wormhole has incredible gigantic tactical implications because it opens directly to the heart of the Delta Quadrant. So uh, everything in Star Trek takes place in the Alpha Quadrant. This is the Delta Quadrant that had never been explored by anyone in the Alpha Quadrant um, at this point, uh, I, I think. And like the fucking uh like what this does is it opens directly onto a gigantic uh like opposing force what's it called not the federation uh, something something else I'll, I'll look it up and those guys were like like it, it just now there's a direct hole that leads to, from like the center of this enemy race's territory or it's an, like it's more than one race it's like an entire they control the entire quadrant versus the alpha quadrant and like okay what, what I was going to ask is so in in that it's Star Trek obviously. So like battle tactics are relevant, but mostly it's about diplomacy and there's some assassination stuff that's attempted cuz like every every organization has leaders and people you could you could theoretically try to take out. Um I'm wondering is there is there any like ability to do stuff on that level or is it purely like NPCs we need to kill and get their HP to zero? I don't as opposed it, to it doesn't really specify because like this is all happening. God, I want to know time. that this reads like a news. Is there report. any chance we could negotiate? We like, need, what if we could form an alliance with them? Like, God damn like, it. Like, listen, to this it says as, if, as if I, it, yeah. it says like as okay, tests yeah, yeah. scrambled to muster pilots into action, reports quickly yes. spread that attacks like this were not just happening to them, but elsewhere throughout the Nullsec regions of New Eden. Holy shit. Chinese Alliance fraternity had to had at least one of their own star bases sieged while the Imperium had to prematurely end a war campaign against a rival empire so it could quickly retreat home and mount a defense of its own stations. Meanwhile, oh Pandemic Horde had a special structure they built known as a jump bridge outright destroyed. More and more reports are coming in by the hour, leading to an unprecedented ceasefire between all of EVE Online's warring factions Whoa. as all they focus on defense. Factions. All oh my warring God. factions. Oh my Incredible. God. Incredible. Uh, uh, fucking, um, um, Vite. 
Vite, uh, Vite was the right. Watchmen. Yeah, exactly the same thing. Uh, the only thing that can was unite right us. all along. <laughs> he just, was right. It's just, it's I mean, I know like the moment to moment gameplay in Eve is not anything to write home about. You know, it's uh-huh. very kind of like, like super hardcore played. nerdy, but like just, mm-hmm. just the meta of it is just so fucking so sick cool. and it so makes me dope. wish i was like 10 times more gay so i could get into this game I ju- and enjoy yeah, it i wish i had been there i wish i'd been like a long time player just you know doing my fucking you know doing running my freighter oh you know i'm just you know i, I run freight from the imperium to the other guys i'm, I'm neutral so you know I, and then all of a sudden on the horizon all these alien ships suddenly appear in an unprecedented invasion from a fucking other quadrant or whatever and god. everyone scrambles and is forced to fucking oh my god that's incredible yeah. That's a fucking, so cool, a fucking, cool a fucking lecture. A lecture on Eve Online stories that would be, would be so the dope, best dude. thing. Eve totally deserves a lecture. It's one of the most fascinating gaming worlds out there. Anyone That's, know how old yeah. Eve is? Is it like 30 years old or something? It's, it's not it's, it's, like, it's, 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 it's probably at least 20. It's got to be pushing that. I mean, I... Uh, I, I the, first, I'm gonna find out. the first time I played Eve Online, because I tried it out, was in like 2006. It, okay, it was released 2003. So it is 16 right. years old now, it looks like. Yeah, fascinating. Sounds, sounds about yeah, right. players uh, it's, from the like star every, system in Texas. Every, every fucking region. dude who played Eve Online just had their their 16 year subscription justified, right? as they are now part of the glorious human campaign to fight off this evil entity that needs to be destroyed and prevented from assimilating us into their collective. Uh, it's so if, cool. It, so if cool. I were, uh, imagine, well, actually, wait, imagine you rush yeah. home. Mom, mom, I can't go to school today. The Imperium <laughs> is being well, attacked by the fucking, Nate, the others. I can't Nate, go to school. I can't pause the game, mom. For, There's for, no pausing in <laughs> EVE Online. Nate, for, that to be, for that to be true, you would have had to start playing when you were one year exactly. old. Or else you'd be over early, 17 they now. Start you'd early. be over 18. Okay, um, okay. No, I'm a man child. My mom still makes me go to, you know, uh, cram school or something. Prep it's school. Still for, going to cram school. It, it's, yeah, that's so right. Trying to it's get it's, it's games like Eve no, Online. this isn't normal school, Ben. This is dating college, begun by the legendary dating Chris Chan. Who, you know, that's, uh, yeah. One day I'll learn. <laughs> one day Ga- I'll learn. Games like Eve oh, Online God. and like Two B Two T are so enchanting to me because of the like the real like you can't describe it in another way than history between players in these virtual spaces. Exactly. My favorite, like, uh, my, the, the platonic ideal of a multiplayer game is one where the gameplay feeds into the community and the role-playing, which is being, you know, conducted. And, and that's sort of one of the pillars of uh, Endless War. It's just that, it's for, that the gameplay is merely <laughs> a subject of the role-play that's being happening. And, and even online, it just seems to be, like, a masterful... Uh, All right. uh, v- L- you know, listen, execution listen, of that. listen to this. At the time of publishing this story, CCP Games, the company who made Eve, hasn't mm-hmm. even acknowledged that half of Eve Online is actively on fire. That oh initially that initially led many to believe that this was all some kind of horrific accident or bug. But now the oh. consensus is that this invasion was planned. After okay. all, Eve's online card expansion is called Invasion. I reached out to CCP oh Games God. personally, and the spokesperson said to me they reached out to the drifters for comment, but they rejected our hailing frequency the drifters you motherfucking <laughs> role play pieces of shit god damn it give That's us some awesome. answers if i were the devs the what i what i would the do or, or if i if i were the devs i would make the alien uh, invasion like basically an ai invasion like mm-hmm. like a robot like like swarm or something so that you know they could behave like completely deterministically and be and basically just be a fucking you know I mean, computer image, program which they are like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah yeah and, and that you know to decrease that dreaded uh, uh cognitive di- no what's the word uh neo neo ludo narrative dissonance ludo narrative dissonance new ludo that dreaded ludo narrative dissonance that's my opinion about that. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, the name of the bad guys from uh, Deep Space Nine is the Dominion. The Dominion runs the Gamma Quadrant. And- oh shit! I said the Delta Quadrant. Did I? Fuck! It's the oh, Gamma Quadrant. Dude. Oh, dude, I look like a fucking idiot now. God damn it! <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's in Star Trek Voyager. They're in the like, Quadrant. You, you, the Delta. You're gonna have to take a Star Trek over a short pier. <laughs> Role playing I'm so embarrassed. is simply the highest form of art. Guys, it, don't buy into Munchie's pro roleplay propaganda. I love <laughs> roleplay. Trying to lead you down a dark so path. No, roleplaying <laughs> roleplaying is is like, you know, you're you're an artist, you're making a character, but you are just pretending to be that character. Like all art is roleplaying. You're mm, you're making kinda, shit up. Yeah. 
God, I, strike me down if I ever even <laughs> consider the possibility of being any person other than what what I am. <laughs> it, it's as really much cool. as you may wish for that not to but be the what case. Are you unfortunately, then? it is. So, so, so <laughs> is, is is I I I hate to harp on it uh, about it mm-hmm. more than is necessary. However, it's relevant to the conversation of role playing. Uh, when I was writing things for Endless War, uh, for characters mm-hmm. that were, I had to act out as though I were them in multiple different Discord accounts, logging in and out, literally probably hundreds of times in the course of a really long text conversation that I had fabricated between two uh discord uh, discord users that don't actually exist uh mm-hmm. it was really like you know the advice is to you know just sort of like get into your character's head and you know write from their perspective and you know just really understand what it's like to be them but like the actual like physical act of logging in and out is like insanely helpful just to like to really ram that into your fucking skull that like yeah you know what you really are this person you know why because you're in a discord account look down at the bottom left like that's the avatar of the character that you're role playing like (laughs) it's it's a really like acting it out in a like a literal role play scenario like i felt like genuinely helped me uh write four things like write the dialogue it, it just mm. felt like it was more uh, like I, I like i actually i i believe for a moment that i was indeed in two i i believe yeah. that on multiple occasions yeah dog hell yeah um, dude hell yeah mm, mm, hey by, mm, by the way mm. we just briefly in there mentioned 2b2t i just want to give a shout out to our boy yes. fit mc mm-hmm. hell yeah who is blowing mm. up these days with his fucking minecraft videos uh is that like really? 350,000 he, subs he's, now? He's always been big, dude. When we last talked to him, he was, he was cool at like 200,000. He's like What's doubled he, what? since we last talked to him. That's pretty good. Well, I, 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 mean, I, 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 I kind of thought... Of course, much congratulations. I kind of thought Minecraft was on the decline. Not while this boy's on the mm, case. N- <laughs> it's actually it. gotten a sort of resurgence Minecraft... Hmm. I don't know if Minecraft could ever really be considered on a decline... Like even if it is literally going down, maybe it's just always... it's, it's acceleration. Yeah, yeah, maybe was that. not was like less fast than before or something. I, well, I mean, no, just these I mean, no, but it had to. Its acceleration wall. had to slow down <laughs> because like it just it saturated the population. There was like no more. There was like less, you know, new territory to expand into. Yeah. So I guess I guess that was inevitable as as, it, as you do. Uh, yeah. Well, good job oh, to Fit. I, yep. I, I have been, I have been like, uh, on Twitter. I saw Fit MC, uh, was like, like, uh, doing like a two B two T. Like there was a war going on with Etika. That's his true. Boys that, a month jumping ago. into the server, and uh, Fit MC was backing him up, and it was all cool. And then it was like, ooh, yes, Etika, guys. Too bad about that. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't. Uh... R I P. Yeah, I didn't uh, know anything about Etika really. I'd, I'd seen, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago. I saw people, you know, being, you know, concerned about him, and like I saw a bunch of tweets from his that seemed to suggest a person who was maybe not. His behavior was stable. erratic for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This was yeah. clear. I, all I know him from yeah. is like um, uh, the things one YouTube poops, where where he would like uh, chop up his reactions to things and. And he seemed like a pretty happy, funny, cool guy. So, like, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know what was going on with him. I did hear a couple times that he was, like, depressed or he'd said things, but I never really <laughs> followed his content I mean, or the him. The term bipolar has like, been thrown around. I don't know if that's se- true, but it certainly seemed, seems to fit the he profile. Seemed, he seemed like, I don't know, from his tweets, it, all, it almost seemed like he was, like, I don't know, maybe even schizophrenic or something. Like, he just seemed, like, yeah, uh, yeah. really kind of detached at times he talked about being a god and in, in it's hard to tell exactly how much sincerity i mean uh, how i don't obviously you can't diagnose this from tweets yeah, but uh, yeah. you no. know uh but uh, just yeah. to be clear i have nothing but, but i i mean but there I, I were, like, there I were times say... in the past where like he went missing yeah. and then a bunch of youtubers made videos being like dude etika is missing like is this a hoax who knows like what's going is this some kind of prank or arg or something you know i uh, like on the subject this is this is my more controversial opinion here i suppose it's that one i really i legitimately liked etika i'm really sad about what happened to him felt felt 
pretty emotional about it at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's horrible. He, I, I've said this before, but like he had just subbed to me, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. He wait, Etika like su- Etika subbed you? Yeah, with his remain like, channel, he had subbed to my main channel. Maybe for my Smash videos, I, oh, I don't sure. know, but well, I was thought I that see. was really cool. That is um, cool. Well, and that, he, that was like a week before he died. Obviously, he was in the midst of an episode when he did that. Uh, or <laughs> <Yeah>. else, <laughs> he fair, must fair. have been. But uh, um, yeah. uh, you know, I've heard on the subject of this, I've heard a lot of people saying that like it was fucked up what the internet did of like like joking about Etika's mental state or yeah. like and like being overly just dis- calling him like a faker like keemstar i think people were saying that he called he did call him a faker as i understand it and like just doing yeah. it for attention or a publicity stunt but uh, so that's all you know questionable like varying degrees of like questionable or possibly moral things to do i guess but mm-hmm. i think we're missing the point if we're gonna say that like the problem here was that this internet creator was getting too much negative feedback from the internet and they weren't like the internet is in no position to know how serious or fucked up like i I agree it seems serious with this guy people probably should not i mean like he died so in hindsight yeah it was pretty fucking serious but but i mean Uh, what's what responsibility does like the people basically what i'm saying is I don't think we should really take away from this that, like, people need to not joke or not take things seriously. Uh, you know, actually, yeah. maybe that would even be good. What I, my real point is that there's no hope for that. That, that yeah. no one yeah, should. Yeah, no. I he, agree. he needed, like, I, people in his life that helped him as opposed to trying to get. You, you, you yeah. can't, you can't, you can't blame the. I don't know, this is kind of, I guess this sort of relates to my argument about mm-hmm. uh, Meat Man a couple weeks ago. Like, uh-huh. you can't, you, you know. If you're if you're if you're mentally ill on the internet and you're acting in a way that is erratic and weird, like nobody mm-hmm. nobody on the other side of the keyboard knows what's going on with you. Yeah, like they're yeah. gonna you know they're they're gonna react how they're gonna react, and like you you can't yeah y- you know you you can't be like oh well the you know the internet at large should have done this this and this like it's not something you can dictate right or, or I, I feel like there's going to be people like like philip defranco and others like him who will come out and do like a big moralizing like the internet failed etica it was mm-hmm. like their responsibility yeah. i can already see i mean he's probably already made that video and i, I, I just think like that it, that's not the solution i don't think that's not yeah, you can only fix really be responsible for yourself exactly. like i mm-hmm. err on the side of caution with things like this yeah if i mean if i was following him and i saw all this stuff I would probably not joke about it because uh I I mean I can't t- I I can't like speak to how like clear it was how he was feeling yeah uh, or how I would have uh, interpreted what he was saying but like to err on the side of caution is to like not like laugh at someone who's p- potentially joking about how they're depressed because it's more likely that they are actually depressed We're in no position to know if they're joking or not though I I mean I well uh... Again, you sometimes. It's I mean, I, it, it's harmless. It's harmless to to act concerned when they are joking. Yeah. Um, but it's it's harmful to act not concerned when they aren't joking. I, th- that's true. And and to to like Ben's point, like I, like we said with our last discussion about this kind of stuff, like I totally agree that the like the the snowflake never blames itself for the avalanche, uh, which does strike me as mm-hmm. like kind of what what happened here. I just mm-hmm. like. And this isn't to be callous or like unfeeling, because yeah. I I really this affected me kind of a lot, like more than I expected it to, uh, and made me very very sad. And other things that you have no position to trust me on, but I'm going to say anyway. Um, that like, that's it's just not helpful to frame things this way. And uh, that yeah, like the pro this this has to be something that some people are in a situation where being an internet creator, like, it has these consequences. Right now, we cannot change that this is the sort of thing that people do when, uh, you know, people make jokes. People don't believe you. People talk shit. And, like, someone who's vulnerable to that, it's just inevitable. Like, do we blame the ocean for drowning people who, you know, like, Mm. lose... And, and again, there's this word blame of, like, moral accountability. I agree. Every individual kind of bears a little bit of responsibility on it. I agree with, including me. I mean, I kind of chuckled before at a joke about this just earlier this, well, I'm still sad about it. So I, I, eh, I feel like, on. you know, when someone, someone like if you care about Etika and he's mm-hmm. dead and you're really upset, you're going to want to blame something. You're going to want to yeah. like, 
you know, you're going to be emotional. I think it's overall better that they just yell at the internet, quote unquote, rather than like harmless. specific specific people. Because like I, I don't know, in 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 the same way that like somebody yeah. might have like an episode, and you you know. They they may not say what they mean, mm-hmm. or you know mean what they say, and you're like, eh, if you can if you can understand that they're having a thing, and it's like that's not too like the the things they're saying are not actually what they think, then you can let it slide. And I feel yeah. like in in the wake of something emotionally, uh, you know, not traumatizing, but you know, it it affects people. They'll react in certain ways, and I think getting mad at like a vague like sense of like. Or like being moralizing. I don't think it's it's like cynical. I don't think it's entirely like uh, devoid of. I don't of think it's emotional. necessarily cynical. I, I I mean I agree with you that anybody who feels any kind of way because they like the guy like that's fine. You're feeling th- th- those feelings. I can't argue with. But it's the people who didn't really know Etika and now are like making a case that like yeah, it's I the mean, internet. That's when I, I get annoyed. You know? I w- I wouldn't know who says who didn't know him or didn't know his situation unless they said so. So. I mean, there's that one guy who made, you know what, I won't get into it, like, uh, I saw H3 roasting a guy who would, like, he didn't actually do this, but he made a video titled, like, uh, Etika Ouija board ghost, like, conversing, All and this right. was, like, J-Station. two days, hmm. now, he, he didn't actually do that, but he had titled the video that way, so it was, kind of, and he had made a video a couple days before, where I believe he called out Etika for faking or something and said that he wasn't really dead. Now, I, I don't mm. that you, you shouldn't muddle those two things because no one no. knew for sure what, exactly but, but what to, was going have, on to have to have made fun of him before and then yeah. to be proven wrong and then to title a video it's, like that. It's like, uh, that says, uh, yeah, that, that yeah. is just a scumbag move. It, it, it's yeah. a little scummy. I mean, I would I'll call out some specific people. OK, um. Uh, and blame them for Etika's death, even sure. though the things I'm going to criticize them for are things they did I afterwards. My just is okay, <laughs> but still, sure. I think we should we should Sounds retroactively bad. blame them for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure they're not the only ones who did this, but people I saw a couple people on Twitter making it all about them, like uh, Boogie, uh, of course, uh, yeah. professional coward and appeaser, uh, <laughs> being like, uh, what, he, I mean, mental he was like, health. Yeah, yeah. He, it was like the tweet that I saw was like. You know, you know, I've like, you know, so sorry to hear, so sorry to hear about Boogie. You know, bullying is terrible. Mm-hmm. You know, I've I have experienced bullying. Fortunately for me, I experienced so much bullying that I became hardened to it. You know, un- unlike poor, poor Etika, who just some wasn't points to that. I mean, I don't hate Boogie the way you bullied, do. and he wasn't bullied nearly as much as me, which is might maybe true. You know, that might be true uh-huh. that uh, that fucking Boogie was bullied and shit. Still, he fucking yeah. makes this like sad tweet, humble bragging about how much he'd been bullied and stuff in response to this Etika thing. You know who else did the same thing? And this was a big yeah. disappointment to me. Was uh, fucking Holly Conrad, mm-hmm. um, your favorite content but, creator, as I understand. My favorite content creator, <laughs> yeah. who you know, among you know, is known for several things, but most recently for being the the other woman in yeah. the Jared mm-hmm. scandal. And I was very disappointed because I'm very much on I'm I'm fucking on Jared and Holly's side in that. So mm-hmm. it's disappointing to go and see Holly embarrassing herself with tweets about like talking about how like cancel culture is what killed. Uh, Etika and like uh, you know it's bad and toxic and I you know I've been I also have been the victim of like the internet hate mob you know we well, have to end true? this well well I mean first of all I mean cancel being canceled is didn't kill Etika right well, h- how much do you know about his story though because I think uh, I believe that part of the reason that he was uh, feeling down and, and whatnot to this degree I like I, I think it was disproportionate but it was because he had, uh, he, honestly, it's kind of complicated, but I, he had, like, been involved with, like, a cult in some weird way. I don't know if that was specifically what? responsible. I didn't hear this. I mean, th- that's that's the word that, you, I don't know if that's actually necessarily an accurate label. But, like, he had, he had done, you know, honestly, I don't even fucking know. But I know that he had done things that people were criticizing him for, and he felt bad about it. And I think that was... Like so, and I I would see where that comes from if that's totally true. I I don't know. I'm kind of talking out of okay. my ass, but that was my understanding. Okay, I just I just think for Holly to come out and uh-huh. basically imply like 
guys, what the reason Etika is mm-hmm. dead is the same thing. That happened to me too. That happened to me and Jared. Eh, it's like fuck off. It happened to her more so, I'd say, uh, than Etika. I don't think Etika was getting like the reason I was so shocked. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't yeah, think Etika yeah, I mean, had done that much. Yeah, it, well, exactly. That's why I don't think it's like uh-huh. it has it has nothing to do with what happened with her and Jared. Like, I, it's not... I see a thread of connection here. I see something. Uh... <laughs> you you could you could draw that same thread to like anyone with a following online. It Probably isn't true. The point the fact not that it is true, but rather that it's just it's sort of rude to just yeah, make this person's death about you. Well, okay. Uh, to, to, to take the most charitable interpretation, as I so often like to do, couldn't she be saying that, like, this thing is bad, I have experienced this, here's another example. Guys, let's get rid of this bad thing. It's happening, uh, you know, we're, okay. we're seeing it. I, 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 I understand okay, well, maybe, that, well, maybe, but then but think, what, if, what if that bad thing, what if you don't think that that bad thing she's blaming is what actually is responsible? Well, that's fair. And, like, her, her actual motivation for making that that assertion is just that some unrelated bad thing happened to her. She's mad about it, and she wants to take this it's death a, and use a, it to decry this mm-hmm. unrelated thing that she is opposed to. I mean, it, it's all it's sort of equatable to like a sh- shooting happens, and then everyone says their their stance on gun control. Yeah, it's the same thing, and that's it's true. like you know, fair enough. I would just I I just don't like seeing that like immediately like some sort of agenda being pushed. I mean, like, that, even that's if it's a, even if it's a good cause, I just like someone's dead. Like I don't know. I felt personally. Why, why do you need I, to feel the comment on 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 I the didn't, death? I didn't even like. I mean, I I retweeted like the Etika, the news report that Etika died. I felt gross doing it, especially. I tweeted about this afterward. I like I retweeted and I said like always I mean, liked Etika, I mean, respected news. him. Wish he was. It, yeah, it was it was breaking news. I, but the thing like I rarely comment on serious stuff like this. So it. But I I, I liked Etika a lot. But okay. But the point like after that. I, my brain, I, 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 like, this is a response to my own tweet. I saw that the, oh, wow, this is getting lots of numbers. Hooray for me, getting lots of numbers. Like, my brain did oh, that no. exercise. Yeah. And then I was oh, like, no. ew, the I want to be deceased. Again. This is gross. And so I said, like, I mean, this th- this was almost a virtue signal because I'd already done it. But I was like, uh, I really wish I could get no social cred from this from this thing. Uh, I want to puke when, I, when my brain thinks, hooray, positive I mean, numbers. It- but... You know, I mean, in in I some it, small way, you posting it at all, like regardless of numbers, would still yeah. be like a social cred thing Absolutely. to show that you yeah. care about Etika. Well, in well, you oh, know, exi- yeah. existing within the attention economy, one one cannot mm-hmm. help but you know have their you know have their. We're incentivized, their, all right. Yeah. Yeah. What like like you you can't post something on social media and not have that action tied to your, you know, social worth or yeah. whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I I feel like that's not really that big of a problem, but it is like, you know, it's a bit like, oh yeah, no, you, when you catch yourself doing it, you feel a little stupid. I, I just like I fear I fear the future where I do more and more of this sort of thing and I I begin to not have any, you know, revulsion to my oh. own capitalization mm. on such things which was not i was not cynically approaching this to be clear i am very very sad about what had to edit yes, it's fucked the, up the, obviously the worst thing possible is to find yourself um being like okay with faking concern yeah, for clicks and yeah. views and all that man it's fucked up. i was i was real upset when he died it was fucked up man he was a cool guy it, and it, it's like i'm with everybody else who's like god this was so predictable do you guys know he'd been in like the hospital for these kind of issues twice already and been released both times i know that we can't like keep against his will but i just like i wish that the machinery had worked better to save this fucking guy um well, let's i mean know. let's let's talk about that okay how would it work better? I'll, I'll give like, you what like I would, what would want. What would in, that look like? How would what work better? The internet or like medic or no. the, the, the hospital? Uh, I I don't know. I I guess mental health in America. Uh, I, mean, I suppose yeah, maybe America is real. Like you, it's super hard, as I understand, to like commit people against their will yeah. to like any kind of mental institution. And I don't even know if necessarily I would I would want that. I'll tell you exactly what I would want in a perfect world, though. In a perfect world. I wouldn't yeah. want like the the government to like lock this guy up until he's healthy enough to live. I would want his friends and family to be so concerned mm-hmm. about him and so like willing to move heaven and earth to save him that they not that he even take that much, but that they're like, you know, like whatever, like man, your your cousin's going to stay with you and like take care and make sure you're okay cuz you need our help and we're going to do it. 
I, I mean, I don't know if there was anyone in his life who could, like his little brother had like died and I think committed suicide uh, like years ago. <sighs> It might have been older brother, and it might not be suicide, so I might be speaking wrong. I'm sorry about that if okay. I if I have that wrong. But like he yeah. was fucked up about his brother's death, and for this to happen, it's like I, I would have liked his brother to be around and like you know I, be able to help yeah. him and get him on the right track. I sometimes or get the well, sure. the sense that 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 like um family or like best friend that's so super there for you is yeah. like pretty pretty fictional, like that very often does not really happen like i don't i don't think anyone would do that on. for me not to be mean they, to anyone they, of my they, friends or family but <laughs> i think like i'd be they, in a similar boat like even if they would think that like like they're just not never right in the like mindset to to go that hard I mean, on I trying mean, to save someone imagine yeah. imagine being that cousin and and like your family is like hey you know our boy etika or whatever yeah. you know he's He's having mental stuff. He's having suicidal ideation. He's in a rough mm -hmm. spot. We're going to leave this guy. Like, you got to take care of this guy. Like, imagine, I mean, imagine having to, imagine having to, like, take care of someone like that who, like, doesn't want you to and, like, will, like, fight you on it and will try and, like, undermine you and, like, they're in a mental state to perceive you as the enemy and, like, they're constantly on the verge of a breakdown and you're the one who's there and you've got to yeah. be the one oh, well, to, okay. like, okay. deal yeah. with like it every time. Like, like the, it's, a, it's exhausting. I'm not sure the that Etika was in that place, who can... but it definitely could happen. So I'm, Okay, I'm like the... uh, you know what? I shouldn't have used... I shouldn't have said Etika because I don't know the details. But yeah, imagine but anybody, doing... I'm just, anybody. It pictured someone who is, like, like genuinely suicidal, mm -hmm. like, long-term. Like, ima imagine dealing with that person. Yeah. Especially if you're like not a professional in the field. I mean, look, I'm yeah. I'm again maybe controversial. I am prepared to say that like with our society, with the amount of freedom that we aim to preserve, some people will fall through the cracks. And that's not good, but compared to sure. a society where we, I don't know, force people I mean, to get locked up, it might be a cost I'm willing to pay. Nothing's uh, perfect. Nothing's perfect, I exactly. Guess. So you gotta pick your poison and uh I don't know. I, mean, I don't know, man. Um, you know, if someone's going to, if someone's, you know, I mean, it's tragic. Yeah. But if someone is, you know, for whatever reason, whether mental illness or, I mean, I guess it would generally be mental illness, but whatever. Uh, you know, for if someone's, if someone's dedicated to killing themselves, like. Uh, yeah, who can, can really say they should they stop They can them. do it. Yeah, yeah. There's, it's hard to be, it's hard to make that impossible for someone who, you know, wants to do it. I think that's, yeah, uh, that's what this was. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you're fucking dedicated to the cause or whatever. I uh, uh, I just wish people. I th I I don't know, man. I feel like the answer to this. Well, I I think the problem largely is due to like social media and the kind of negativity you can get. So I get that that's like an issue, and you can I don't know. You can humiliate yourself, and you can be attacked from every corner of the globe all at once. Uh, you know, justified or not, it's just something that can happen now. And I don't know, I, like, I feel like in the situations like this, this the kind of solution is to, like, get, in whatever way, regain perspective. Uh, and I, if you've got, like, you know, a malfunctioning brain, as people with mental illness do, not, not to disparage them, like, I understand that can be border impossible or just difficult or whatever. Uh, but, like, if you're, like, if you just go away from the internet for, like, a week, let's say, and you're just, like, you know, hanging out with your family, maybe you go on vacation somewhere or something, and it's like, oh, you know, life's okay. Life's not terrible. It's the fact that you've got like an online job, though, that makes you pretty vulnerable to the constant waves of assault of this stuff. And yeah, it, I don't it know. seems it seems like really, really harsh on, mm -hmm. uh, really hard on the, the 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 people who are streamers generally. Yeah, where they they have to be like doing multiple hours a day mm -hmm. playing games or whatever it is they do, and like holidays are such such an impossibility that they're always hooked into whatever's going on they're always online they're always entertaining mm -hmm. um and they sure. i mean it it they they work really hard and they get a lot of money for it but if i can't help but wonder if this this there's so many of these streamers are like really fucking themselves up due to mentally this. i would be, yeah I'd mentally bet so. yeah even my little bit of streaming i do now there's, you know, there's a little bit of anxiety and kind of pressure that goes along with it, such that I don't want to do it full time. That sounds, uh, yeah. mm. not I would never great want to be a full time streamer. Just to imagine see. being, imagine being on camera like eight hours a day, exactly, like for a full, like for a full work week, like yeah, live that's, uh, on camera. That's not for me. That's not for me. Yeah, 
Yeah. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll well, whore myself out. A lot of these internet things me, are, are, are we'll good see. hobbies. Uh, That's why making videos, I think, is healthy. It still ties into the whole machine, but it's like you produce, you edit down what you don't like out of it. It's it's less stressful. I don't know. I just I, I just like that better personally. What were you saying, Munchie? You were you were uh, chiming just in. Just to pivot away from this, sure. To go sure. back to Fit MC to mm -hmm. springboard off of him into a tangent. Mm -hmm. uh, I said this before, but seeing worlds collide on your Twitter timeline or in YouTube comments specifically related to this, yeah, yeah. where just you're on some video and you're you're enjoying your life and the and the content creators inside of it, and you scroll down and you see that. Uh, uh, another part of your brain, another part of the people, uh, and another content creator is on this other content creator that you like. Oh, it's insane! <laughs> and uh, uh, when it's your own content, like how it was for when I saw Fit MC coming on the PCP, <laughs> what the fuck? That's know, so man. bizarre of a thing from my perspective to have this like two B two T YouTuber that I follow comment on my on like on my podcast. That was strange. And and I had a moment uh like that earlier today when I was scrolling mm -hmm. through the comments of the latest episode when who do I see but fly away now? What? Uh, for those of you with a a uh, Ben, give me a give me a, a way what? to describe a brain. What what's a way to describe a brain that's a uh, you never forget uh, something? Wait, a way to describe a brain that's what that that never forgets something. You know, there's wrinkle, there's smooth a steel brain, trap. There's brain, a steel trap, a steel uh, trap, mine. steel brain, steel mm, yeah. brain. All right, for for the steel brain of you, may remember that name from my Deagle Nation lecture, as he yeah. was a key member of Team Gamer Food, and I I can only assume <laughs> that he just found the PCP through that, and then has just probably been, like what like like following us since then, and just now has decided to comment. What fly away now? Listen, I understand that from your perspective. You've been living life for years, and that you are, uh, you know, far removed from whatever saga that you were once in at, at that point. But to me, you're still fucking crazy, dude. You think you can just come on the PCP? That's insane. <laughs> Fly away now is on the PCP. What? Yeah. So shout out to Fly Away Now. Dude, well, you should be, he should be right on now. the show. Yeah. What? That's crazy. That's crazy talk. Uh, well, uh, that makes me think that PCP. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. FitMC was just lurking in the shadows. Flying a while. Uh, flying yeah, yeah. just lurking in the shadows. Who else? Who other? When is PewDiePie uh, major finally going to comment? Major creator that I love and adore. PewDiePie yeah. Notch. We know Notch is watching our primo Minecraft, you know, discussions. He's here. Yeah, he, not Notch. Notch is a is a Monkey Jones fan. Like he's probably he's probably like all up in the. You lore. know the thing about Notch knows. that's fascinating. Had, I mean, I mean, we had uh, we had everyone's. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone's favorite, uh, Florian Himsel. Indeed, uh, he, indeed. He was right. A, hey, you know, Game Squid. news about Florian Himsel? He's a yeah. lib now. I'm so excited. We did it, gamers. <laughs> we, we we made him a he put out a video being like, yeah, yeah I used to be edgy the, and the, like triggering the libs, but actually, I think maybe they make some good points. Wow, and I was like, yes. <laughs> and I left a long and I left a long comment being like, here's my favorite left tubers. Now, not to go, mean, go watch not them to, and get radicalized. The, 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 get radicalized. He's gonna make a game now. The binding of capitalism. Ah. <laughs> Uh, would you? I'm just curious. Was this? Did this seem like, uh, you know, well thought out and legitimate, or was it, you know, kind of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, good. Yeah, it's That's just fine. him being like, so you know, here's the stuff I used to say, and here's uh, here's some thoughts I have about politics nowadays, and how they're different from what I used to think. Sounds reasonable to me. Mm -hmm. You could like check your subscribers. I'm 99 percent sure. In fact, I I, I say yeah, that can. looking at the feature where I can do it right now, and I'm just scrolling through. Like, what if I just see someone who I just like I, I'll lose my shit on. Like, well, I, I don't uh, think that's Munchie, like impossible you, right you now. You know, you can you can sort by most popular. You can sort them by the most <sighs> subs, most people. subscribers. Why? Yeah. You can uh, so you can just see who is your most subbed. Uh, person who subs you. <laughs> you can't you can't do that on Twitter though. I wish you could. There there are. I think apps you can use to do that, though. I haven't right. looked for apps, and I haven't found any that are huh. free. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I, I can only find in the past 28 days here on mm -hmm. YouTube right now. I, I'll, I'll try and find. Okay. So oh, because that, that's the new fucking Creator Studio thing. They're probably yeah. removing that fucking functionality like everything else with this. P Did you guys? Okay, time for a call out. Once again, do you guys watch Creator Insider? Uh, the the no. they are like the unquote no. quote unofficial YouTube team 
like uh, update shit. They're the you. Everyone who does YouTube should watch them because they just release information that you're not going to get anywhere else about like literally what YouTube is doing. It's the thing that we all wanted for years about like why doesn't YouTube just make a YouTube channel and make announcements about their changes? Well, that's what they are. That's exactly what they are, and they're often shitty and terrible. And I hate everyone who works there. Uh, <laughs> but they do in fact release good information to know if you're going to do YouTube shit. Um, and they have been. I, I want to use the word shilling. They've been shilling the YouTube Studio beta as opposed to, like, the Studio Classic. And I know it's not their fault. Like, YouTube just decided they're going to update the Studio to, like, the new thing. And they're going to get rid of the Classic Studio pretty soon. And I am dreading that day because I fucking oh, hate God. the new YouTube Studio. Hold Let on. me just give you one. Here's one reason why I hate the new Dude, YouTube Digibro Studio. Dude, Digibro subscribes to me. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> He's Here's got 363,000 subs. This won't even be a big deal for most people, but for me, it's infuriating. It's, okay, every month when I'm going over my finances and the PCP's finances, which I do every month, there is a thing that you can do where you set up, like, uh, exact dates of when you want your, like, income earning to be for your analytics. This is easy to do. You click the little calendar. It works relatively well on, um, on the Studio Beta and the Classic, so that's fine. You can find the window of, like, a month's earnings. No problem. Get the information you need. The problem is, on Classic, you have the option of, you can, you can have that block of time, that set number of days you want to get your analytics from. You can then go to the top right, click on your account, switch account, and you can switch accounts. And if you do it on Classic, it retains that date window when you switch between accounts. I have a lot of YouTube accounts that I, I go into for this stuff. And great, done, easy. On fucking Studio Beta, it resets the goddamn time window, so I have to manually set it again for every fucking time. Now, the, the one advantage is they have slightly more options. You, you can go into a menu and select, like, a previous month a little bit easier. But I still have to click an extra fucking button that I didn't have to in Classic for that reason alone. I hate the new one, and it's fucking annoying. It just lacks features the other had, and I was used to. And I'm going to cry and bitch about it forever. And everyone As who pushes should. the studio beta, uh, fuck you. You're a bad person. Yeah. This is my... I mean, maybe it'll chance. get better, my... but it, right now, the beta leaves a lot to be desired. Yes, All right. exactly. I, 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 I'm in a fucking rabbit hole right now. Okay, so I, I went to our subscribers, and I'm looking at everyone sorted by most popular. On and the PCP, so, I assume. A, a, a sh yeah, of course. Mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. shocking revelation. Yeah. Drum roll, please, for the top subscriber that we have to the PCP. Drum roll, please. Digibro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did it. Also but but also okay uh, among these among these are uh, again just like uh, someone that I know I already know who you are and like you're watching the PCP what the fuck yeah. deadly comics is oh, yeah. is, oh, yeah. is yeah. described to the PCP deadly comics what? is great what huh what do you mean what that's pretty I mean, cool he, he he's he's my best friend I love <laughs> deadly comics he's a he's a subscriber of mine as well we see him I, around I think I, I I remember this boxing video from years ago. I, I can't even believe that it's it's real. He, do, the person do you remember? Makes this do you real? What? Do you remember he he animated the 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 give and take jumping up and down? Yeah. Oh, that was him that I put that, in my the, fucking video. Oh, yeah, that's that. because he was a subscriber of like give and take reviews or whatever. He's done that's a lot awesome. of really, really great funny animation to work since then. If you guys don't keep up with him, it's fucking yeah, he's, fantastic. he's incredible. No, yeah, oh, what guys? What? <laughs> What, what's happening? <laughs> I don't understand. Why are these people subscribe to the PCP? The dick show subscribe to the PCP? What's oh, is that happening? True? Hey, what do you know? Uh, that's, uh, I mean, obviously that's, those guys, they don't know much about us or care. They obviously just subbed for the, uh, for the, you know, lecture. For the did. Don't, don't, say, lecture. don't say that, dude. The fucking, the collabs in the works. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, we'll see. Uh, uh, Damn. And, 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 and people like Fly Away Now are like, like people who I care intensely about, but like don't right. have like, you know, subscribers. So I can those just gonna like be scroll hard to through find, here yeah. and find, like, okay, like text talks. I already knew that he was a fan, but like, yep, I, I yep. didn't know he was a fan. That would have been crazy. Damn, uh, I'm looking at Deadly Comics' newest video, Milk Dust. Ooh, I love it. Got great oh, yeah. effects. Looks sick. Deadly comics. Pass is good. analysis. Oh, glorious, glorious. Yep, we got him. Got him. <laughs> uh, frankly, there's not a lot of accolades on the PCP. The there's some for sure, and that's cool. 
Um, the, okay, but, okay, okay. The, the fucking like exponential like drop and like oh you know you, you got Digibro at the top with like almost yeah. 400k and then like almost immediately it's like oh that's like one goes down to zero. K. Yeah, I mean you know for that's fine. I mean, it's not like if, you well, know, I mean how okay. many? You're, you're not what, what less valid than the, the YouTube fan population have low has Digibro level subscribers. Yeah, the, not not yeah. much. The, the most. Mm-hmm. The most curious one of mine is like the most subscribed is a channel called Reckless Eating, uh, <laughs> uh-huh. with six hundred thousand subscribers. Wasn't uh, they the are Jesse they on are that, like right? yeah Jesse like did like the Count Chocula review like a million years ago yeah. and yeah. somehow yeah. through some like uh like association th- through Jesse he found Hypocrite and he subscribed and he I think has commented on a few videos. I got a, sort of like, huh? Man, I got a bunch of these fucking about anime that guy, guys cool. subbed to me. Go fuck off, dude. I don't give a shit about uh, your terrible uh, anime. All right, now, now I'm just, I'm just here for <laughs> pure fellatio at this point. I'm yeah. on my own, and apparently, Mr. Meat Man's following me. Okay, all right, okay. Oh, he wants to dig but, up that uh, scoop, dude. He wants yeah, the deets. Did, yeah, he really. Okay, did. Well, you know he what? Thought to, that was monkey. To be fair, Frank, he <laughs> thought you were. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, I, you know, unironically, Mr. Meat Man, I think, was like kind of a fan of at least some of us for a while and i don't know he probably still is i mean there's no nothing's changed about what any of us do uh so i mean i, I just i think he generally likes my content as far as i know you, 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 I, you I don't know, know. You, you know what i'm be trying a to fun put words thing. in his mouth you, you know you want to be fun you want to be fun yeah even even if you're even if you're not you know like a fucking like a big wig big dick just yeah, i am you know what if, if you're listening to this just post a comment post a comment about, i don't know what you do what, what your deal is I don't yeah, know. What's, what's, maybe what's your maybe, deal? I, what, maybe what? I do know you from somewhere. If you have vast maybe. amounts of social <laughs> currency, please post in the comments below so that we may <laughs> we may <laughs> bask in its <laughs> glow. I would love that. I would absolutely, uh, you know, that'd be fucking, delectable. Fucking Viva Reverie as well. Mm-hmm. That's a cool guy. I'm a two. Oh yeah, he's a cool guy. Those pony things. Yep, yep, yep. Wasting Great his anime. talents on ponies, but you know, one day maybe he'll wake up to to justice. <laughs> There's a bizarre amount of subscribers to me that have Scott Pilgrim avatars, which I'm completely fine <laughs> Oh, that's with. concerning. That's no, nice. no, 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 that, no. That's that's the Incredible. audience you want to be reaching. <laughs> yeah, literally. <clears throat> the Scott Pilgrim audience. Um Okay. So enough enough Jack on our own yeah, about sure. how cool our subscribers sure, are. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, yeah. Let course. me you guys catch those fucking democratic debates oh, on the television? I, I didn't know. You know, television. I wanted to. Um, yeah. I wanted to look back, but I all I could find on YouTube was like reaction videos, really? and I couldn't find the actual thing. I watched them well, both. I, on I found YouTube. clips. The mm. whole thing. No, yeah. I, I mean like afterwards. I wasn't watching them. Me at too. The time. I watched them afterwards. I was, like, I was gonna. I'm gay. Oh well, whatever. You know, oh, man. I really thought I did... long and hard yeah. about watching those. My conclusion was, and this just goes to my general thoughts on life these days. It's that. I I don't want to engage with politics on this kind of like fast like kind of like the hype cycle level. I would be much happier letting everybody else sort it out and then I will try to sort through. And you know what? Maybe I'm lazy, maybe I'm avoiding the question, but I think it's the best I thing for me. I watch them for the exact opposite it's... reason. I watch them because I didn't want to have the the information of the debates be filtered through biased perspectives from other That's people. That's understandable. I wanted too. to observe it firsthand and draw my own conclusions. I mean, I'd yeah. rather watch them all, like, in yeah. six months, if, but I'm not going Nate. to, obviously. <laughs> Nate, I, I understand what you mean by that, I, yeah. but here's my counter thing. Sure, I sure. kind of felt the same way mm-hmm. in 2016, and in 2016, I wasn't really paying attention, and mm-hmm. I was just like, eh, doesn't matter, I'll just wait for the, I'll wait for the final election, I'll look at the final candidates, mm-hmm. I'll pick between them, you know, the... I was like, like, you know, everything up until that is the, it's, it's all just, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. And then because I had that attitude, I didn't, I wasn't Voting paying attention in the Democratic primaries. Yeah, yeah. And I created, and I fa- the greatest moral failing of my entire life, which was not voting for Bernie in the primaries because I didn't vote in the primaries because I wasn't paying attention. So this time I was like, well, I'm going to be, I got to at least pay some attention. Uh, yeah, well, I got okay. to at, le- at least pay some attention to like, you know, the main fucking event of the, of the race, which is, you know, the debates. Uh, so you I, know, I th- that's, in. that's fair. I'd highly encourage yeah. people to arm themselves with information and to vote in their primaries including me i should do that too if i i don't even know if i'm registered to a party i certainly don't feel like i belong to either party or, or any of the pretty, myriad parties out there I, but people I don't know should how it is in uh cincinnati uh-huh. i'm pretty sure in massachusetts i think i'm registered as an independent in massachusetts but i mm-hmm. think in massachusetts independents are allowed to vote 
in either people should know those sorts of things yeah i should make absolutely sure of that but you know i i i uh was actually talking about this in my stream yesterday a little bit that i do consider it a civic duty to vote and i I think like Mm -hmm. you cannot do it in the same way that you cannot i don't know like do anything that you should do but like it, it that's that's worse than doing it which i count with myself so I, I voted in the last bunch of elections but not the primaries and the primaries kind of matter more the only thing i is, mean oh, you yeah. know i mean yeah i didn't think about it until 2016 when the 2016 primaries opened my just, eyes just, yeah the, yeah yeah the tw- 2016 the primaries decided everything it was so clear so that, i yeah. i mean our two votes obviously you know wouldn't have made a big i wanted to vote for bernie i was fucked up that bernie didn't win uh, you know, last yeah. time I wouldn't in, vote in for him now. But in hindsight, I w- you wouldn't wait. What do you mean you wouldn't vote for him now? I mean, I I mean, uh, f- I don't know. I'd probably vote for Trump. So I was gonna vote for anybody because uh, what things are going fine. I don't know. Pretty happy. <laughs> are you insane? No. Oh no. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? Not at all. Did you actually say that? Oh my Listen, god, you're so what? down the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm down the I'm down the rabbit. I'm gonna fucking. I, I, well, I fucking, I totally admit to my what? total ignorance. I have no, no, not even have I not looked into it. I have no interest in looking into like real life politics. And so, uh, I mean, I'll vote. I'll figure out somebody to vote, and I'll probably do what I've done and basically cop out and just vote for like a third party person who isn't gonna win anyway. Which you know, I mean, is my right to do. Obviously, is this a is this a bit? No, nah. no. Nah. You know, most of the country I mean, uh, uh, hmm. y- y- just, you know, is, is you, pretty right I mean, wing. I mean, you know, about half. I- I'm not even right wing. It's just that I don't I mean, really. Right. I-, I mean, I want Trump, small government God. overall. Trump clearly so. is like oh he, he cl- uh, clearly is like a really stupid, like silly man who says the wrong things on TV. And it's really funny when he does that. Mm-hmm. Um I assume you're one of those people who likes to ignore like the dr- the, the, the Twitter drama stuff. True. And you care more about policy. Do you even know what Trump has been doing, though? I know a couple of I things. I mean, neither, I don't either, but, like, I, I, I wouldn't immediately say, yeah, sure, Trump. Well, okay, l- 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 let me be more specific. Uh, what, I, what I'm really saying is, because, uh, frankly speaking, I'm almost definitely not going to vote for Trump. I mean, you know, so, so let's, not, let's not overreact here. Nate's the biggest Trump supporter in the world. He loves everything Trump is doing. My point is that uh, it doesn't seem to me very likely that anyone's going to beat Trump. So considering that, I'm, I don't know, I'm relatively ambivalent about who I Why vote for that? anyway. Uh, I mean, look, I understand Why people are probably going to disagree with that. that. Why is that a reason to vote for him? And second of all, I mean, I don't think that's, he might win. Well, I don't think it's a sure thing. To, to, I mean, to break uh, it down, uh, I'm the, in Ohio. The, uh, Ohio's going to uh, go red. So, I mean, you know. I, well, how do you know? Well, it, it went red last time, and it seems like it's been trending that way. I, to, I haven't it. really I mean, studied it or I, anything. I understand that you, you don't really care, but like, it seems like a, a, like a pretty silly like position to be like, well, I mean, it was this you, once, you, it'll you say, probably be say, this again, therefore say, I won't even think well, about okay, it. You, you, should that, vote. you say that voting is a civic duty, but Correct. I, think I, people, I honestly think people with your attitude probably just shouldn't vote, because that's fucking dumb. I, I mean, I agree. Well, okay, you're asking me right now, before I had a chance to you know look at anything. So, I don't know. Uh, let's, let's, let's readdress this question when the primaries are coming you know, up Nate, or when I, the election is coming I up. I really wish that you had seen the debates because I really would love to hear your thoughts on all the shit. There was a lot of Not shit. that I think they were great you know or what? anything. Uh, In it, fact, they were kind of disappointing. Th- this will be more this will be more important than anything I just said about who I'm going to vote for. The real deal here with with me as a person is I want the government to be so small that I don't have to think about it at all. That's so so the the question to me of like who are you going to vote for? is it's about, like, who will fuck things up the least, and uh, and additionally, like, who will do the less to increase the size of government, because I just don't want it to be big. So, so, like, I understand people who want the government to fix things, understandable, that's fair. I just don't think that's happening. And again, I'm if not a student of political philosophy. I don't, don't know anything. These are general thoughts of experience of life that could be totally wrong. It's just that, you know... Uh, like considering that the question to me of who to vote for is like not a very important one other than like who will not fuck up the world more I'd rather that opposite of that happen so you know reasonable to think about I understand the president has influence on the world Uh, I just like who who can I vote for to diminish that power that's the person I want to vote for because I just want to do my own shit and not be bothered by anyone Uh, because that you know that's it I mean, if we, I mean, I want to kind of want to vote for Bernie because he'll diminish corporate power because that's like 
kind of the more pressing problem in my life, right? Economically speaking, that's hey, uh, that's what, what, what I'm into. I get that. What's going on with Yang? I I heard that his mic was like Yang cut. got cucked, man. Yang got yeah. cucked. Yeah. Okay, he didn't. Speak I'm not saying up, it's his fault, they, but they, yeah. they they only asked him like one or two questions. Mm-hmm. They, he got snubbed, and also apparently his mic was turned off when he tried There's to interject. There's video a couple evidence of times. showing that his mic did get was turned off. Okay, so they fucking um yeah they fucking Forrest Gumped him. Remember that? Part oh yeah, when they when they cut the mic, microphone yeah. off. Okay, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. Um, so that happened to him. So he's being silenced. Um, which is great. You know, I love it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> God no. Help. I mean, okay. uh, you know, I, I, I did watch just uh, of, of passing interest. I watched a couple people's like uh, summaries of the debate and it was it was interesting to see. I watched um, uh, I think I watched Ben Shapiro on the one hand say that Bernie lost hard. And then on the other oh hand, I watched uh, Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk say that Bernie won not as much as Kamala Harris, but that Bernie came out. And I'm just like, well, this just I, seems like he, people's biases are. Well, well Ben Shapiro won. is a fucking uh, goblin, so like I think he's obviously wrong, and I would assume that about anything he says. I mean, but what a what a whatever. what a boring point. Because now we okay, people whose politi- politics are different from mine, their opinion just doesn't matter. Well, there's We're trying people to speak who to are the public here. different, and there's people who I've are heard, stupid. The only things um, I've heard Ben Shapiro say are yeah, and I couldn't <laughs> understand him. <laughs> okay, uh-huh. okay, I don't think Bernie was like a huge. I don't think he. Yeah, like, it's pretty clear that the general consensus that the people that came out the most ahead in the debates were Tulsi Gabbard in the first one and uh, Kamala Harris in the second one. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I was just, I was waiting for Biden to embarrass himself, which he kind of did, but not as much as I hoped he would. Kamala dunked on him or something. Kamala dunked on him really hard. And then there was another part where, um, oh God, fucking the guy who looks like the fucking dweeby guy from 30 Rock. Um, I don't don't know, man. Yeah. Like a a younger candidate who mm-hmm. looked like a fucking nerd, but he 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 was all right. He came out. He was like thirty years ago. A, a politician came to my town or something. I forget, fuck, I forget the details. A, I heard a politician speak, and he said it was time to pass the torch oh, yeah. to the next to the next generation. <laughs> that politician was Joe Biden, Lol. and Joe Biden fucking smirks at the camera and is like, uh, "Well, I'm gonna hold on to that torch a little longer. You'll pry this." He literally said that. Yeah, he did. Uh, You'll pry this torch from my cold dead he hands. Didn't say that. <laughs> um, he didn't. Li- he did not literally say that. Um, that was pretty funny. Uh, the best best part of both debates was when fucking um, uh, Hick, Hickenlooper, mm-hmm. that fucking ghoul, was like, I think we need to n- not, we need to not, we need to make it really clear that we're not socialists, because if we're socialists, then the Republicans will call us socialists, and that's bad. <laughs> I mean, that and will happen, true, true it, as it, they already it, well, do. Yeah, I mean, he was talking it about already happens. I mean, I mean, he's so, so fucking behind that Bernie's literally running as a democratic socialist. He is openly a socialist. And you're like, we got, we can't let them call us socialists. Well, hey, Bernie dude, fucking is even, one. Hasn't Bernie been rejecting one. the label of socialist? Like, I know he's a democratic he socialist. He's like, no, 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 that's not socialism, guys. This is a totally different thing. Isn't that his his stance? I mean, think about it, though, Ben. Uh, the whole know. reason Bernie got fucking so. snubbed last time by his own party is because he was basically pushing the socialist agenda that the people. Yo, I'll, I'll throw this out here, though, Ben, because I I'm it's it's interesting to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, like, OK, you're 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 into the left stuff. Got it. That's cool. Is America overall like with you on this? Like, I mean, like, no, are they going to win? No, Nate. No. OK. Uh, well, I think Bernie could win. Okay, um, that's possible. I don't know. America's not on board because the Overton window has shifted, mm-hmm. and what's considered center, what's considered centrist now, is like fundamentally conservative. Okay. Um. So no. Um. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're the opposition, but, but that's fine because the actual things on offer by people like Bernie are things that people actually care about and want. Like, for example, a uh, student loan debt forgiveness universal health care um etc mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. such and such so yeah no i think it is okay probably against but what why do you ask that nate what, what what's the point of that fucking question well my, my question it's really it's that um what's, like, what's the what's the actionable result of the of knowing that answer? <laughs> it, it's that like um i mean based on the people that i've been listening to 
it it's it's been like put out there that like so the left um it, like the democratic debates are are really far left in what most people are into and like that's fine they, they, that that's their values or whatnot but like in a general election won't they be like too far left overall to win back like you know the the actual general election from somebody like Trump who's obviously going to be the other side I mean I know that the the far left people hate Trump. But like, it like, is this a winnable plan to just keep going left? And the, the idea of even staying Nate, at all centrist seems to be Nate, so demonized. But isn't that Nate, like literally the way you the appeal way, to more people? What you're saying, what you are saying uh -huh. is, and, and I'm an idiot in politics, that, by the way. I know nothing for the so. left. Okay, okay. Well, well, you know, you're not the only person to say this, uh -huh. but it's very frustrating because basically what you're saying is, okay, if the left wants to win, mm -hmm. if right, if the left wants to to do what it wants to do, it needs to concede and appease and give as much ground to the right as possible. I mean, negotiate, right? And that's, and that's right. That's what Democrats do. They compromise, but we've compromised too much. And what, and what you, the result of that mm -hmm. is like centrist neoliberal shills like Hillary getting supported, like Biden, um, uh -huh. who will change nothing, accomplish nothing. Uh, will they be better than Trump? Yeah, sure. But like, they won't do anything. And what we need is a fucking someone, you know, Bernie, for example, someone who's actually got who wants to like fundamentally change. Stuff. Well, you know, Ben, I'm with you in the sense of like having the kind of stagnation that results from that is probably good for no one in that it might just mm -hmm. be straight up better. Like, I I'm a small government guy, so I'm not into most of these ideas. Um, but like but having them might actually be better than having the kind of half measures that seem to paralyze society somewhat. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, uh, maybe I don't fucking know. I don't, I certainly don't like when everything's all like compromise and no one actually gets hey, the, the hey actual guys, plan. Vote, vote, vote Biden. Nothing will, nothing will fundamentally change. You know, sick. Love it. <laughs> That's a quote. He said, like, he said, nothing will fundamentally change. You know, in, the, like, the, here, here's the problem with me and politics. It's that I'm very happy with my life. And I don't mm. need much to change such that I am not incentivized per and call me a selfish asshole, I guess, but I'm not incentivized okay. to like look into what can be done to improve other people's lives because that will have no impact on my life. And that, uh, as I a mean, result, that's 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 one hell of, that's one hell of a sound. Well, bite you just gave. I mean, I mean, Nate, what should I do? I mean, you know, know, people, people, but you, it's hard to discern Nate. what like other people's lives being better will do to affect your this life. This is like, why you can I assume just it's just generally anything. good. Everything's great. But there's for nothing me right like now. immediately. You know, I, I understand uh -huh. that sentiment. I mean, I feel that a lot. Well, not specifically, but like, it's just sort of ah, jeez. You know, I I have to think. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. Um, I just think it would be nice if, uh, you know, we took care of our citizens. But I just hey, don't want the government to do anything. You know, you know whatever. Yeah, I... I <laughs> the problem for me is that the government <laughs> has <laughs> fucked up some people's lives, so it seems like it owes people something for that. But once we're square, can't we just call this thing off? And let, you know, no. things just run on no. their own. It'll be fine. We can't fucking call it off. It won't be fine. It's not fine. Well, no, it's not fine right now. Yeah, there's things that need to be made amended for. I agree, corporate... Th there's tons of yeah. problems with corporations. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Seems yeah. like power is being it, consolidated. Yeah. It, sure, it sure is, Nate. It sure is. Did you see that fucking wealth chart that I tweeted? It's but but the the other issue is I don't did you see agree. The fucking chart? I, I did. did you I see did. The fucking chart. C cool visual. Okay. I still stand by the belief that uh, some people having more money than others is not a moral crime. You know, well, I mean, power is a zero sum game, Nate. Okay, but this this idea of power, like, at what point will a company be so rich it's allowed to just, like, take my house from under me and kick me onto the street? Because if that's not going to happen, then I don't care how much money they have. But the... But the point is that the more they have, the less everyone else have. That's how power works. Okay, well, you're talking about power... I'm talking about money. Yeah, and money and money is power. Um. Well, I mean, oh, I be, I think you're doing an unfair conflation here. Like you're saying, like, I'm oh, not conflating. Money is power. Well, that isn't that a conflation right there? No, not when it's true. Not when two things are the same. I mean, I but I I just established why I don't agree with that. So maybe I'm wrong, no, but I just no, don't you didn't. agree. Yeah, I mean, no amount of money will let someone just like kill me. 
So until no. that happens, you know, I'm not really worried so, about well, it. So, so, oh, so, yeah, so money, so money's not power then. Okay, great. Point, point. Money made. can definitely help them like do it in a way that they don't get caught. Like, doing okay, it so they like they bribe like the town commission such that like those people will, you know, they'll sign some forms and. Well, they pay an assassin to do it sneaky. Tweak some things so that they can, you know, like wheedle their way in the system to like take my house. Uh, or something like I that. Mean, I mean, that's not that's not a isn't, crazy isn't thing. What, money what is, who fucking gives who gives a shit about your house? Isn't money being power the entire point of lobbying? Right? Like, isn't that the whole yes, point? It is. I mean, it yeah. Is the but but but, but the, the problem there is that You're, they can lobby the government to do things that I'd rather the government couldn't do one way or another. Just l- what get are you out of our lives. About? Like like what? I mean, get out of our like. Get out how of how our about lives. like a, a company dumping waste? Uh, will you know? F- will uh, you know? They'll they'll whatever the fuck it. They'll use money and they'll lobby to get like loosen environmental controls. Okay, um, so like yeah. that's the government like shifting their that's, standards. That's that's money being power right there. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I'm no fucking expert, but just like uh, can't. You don't have to be an expert. This isn't complicated. It's extremely complicated, and the way that what you I reduce it as like my point is obviously the right one. Anyone who thinks differently obviously they're not making any sense at all when i say when i say that money is power yeah i think anyone that thinks differently obviously just doesn't know what they're fucking talking about well like i guess what do you think money is like what do you think money is it's you know like uh what's the word like leverage to be able to get people to do stuff there you go but the thing is you just have the power to say no when people ask you to make a transaction I mean, I oppose the anyone being able to override one's right to choose things, uh, cause my freedom. But I don't think that just having money to buy things that you want when people agree to the exchange is the beast that we need to contend with. Well, it is. I'm sorry. Well, I guess that's it. Maybe I'm. I, I could just be the ignorant one here and not know anything. That's definitely you... possible. Uh, but yeah. I don't know. This is what I think. It sure is. Okay. Well. Whatever. I mean, what do you expect right. from me? <laughs> I'm not educated I don't know. on this. Be- better, better? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? I think you probably could be a good person if you put a little effort. Well, into see, it. here, here's my focus. My, I mean, call me a bad person if you want. My focus is on being the personally the best person I can be, building myself up so that I can do good for myself and the people around me, and taking care of my immediate environment. If you want to call that a bad person, that's your that's your right. Excuse me. But, I mean, I would call that just, you know, doing the things that are more tangibly you're able to control in your life to try to make the world a better place. But you're not you're not talking about stuff that just affects you. Like true when you when you you're taught you're talking about like society at large. So, like, we've moved beyond that. Like, yeah, I get it that you personally want to like, I don't know, you know, have have a house, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, have money. Like, I want those things, too, because I need those things, because I, I need to want those things, because that's the society we live in, right? You need to and want I, them? What and, do you I don't bl- and I don't blame you for being like, I don't want there to be societal upheaval. I don't want there to be, you know, um, strife. I don't want there to be, uh, yeah. you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be taxed and, and, you know, be, you know, impoverished. That's all fine. Mm-hmm. Um, makes sense. But then there's shit like uh you know in the in the in the broader scope of things you're like oh small government well small government means means corporations run rampant right the the smaller the government gets the less we have the less checks we have on on unrestrained capitalism which caused the 2008 fucking financial crisis and subsequent well look i'm saying small not zero for example i don't think that anarchy is the solution i i agree on that it's but you know i mean it seems to me that like a lot of what we're doing is putting faulty uh like like the system itself is putting faulty incentives into place and uh, again, I have not studied this shit, but Fault? what's a faulty incentive? What do you mean? Well, uh, I don't know. Like, like all the regulation on drug testing. Um, I mean, I was just listening to something about how, uh, like the uh, uh, regulations, like they make. I, I get it. We don't want to hurt people. Sounds good. Got it. The problem is when this like stagnates the development of new products and adds such overhead that the drugs are so expensive. I mean, this sounds like it's being counterproductive at a certain point. The so what can we do? Expen- that's not why the drugs are expensive. The drugs are expensive because fucking big pharma is a monopoly. What? But there's multiple drug companies. So how is that a monopoly? 
Well, they have a well. Okay, Patents well, they're a, 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 a polyopoly. Okay, right? They like they might be multiple companies, right? But the point is that they are rich. They're a rich capitalist corporation. They have all the money. They lobby for for policies that empower them. They have all the hands in the situation, right? That's it's not because it's not because like testing regulations are too strict. That's not why. Drugs are expensive. I mean, what I want... It's because I they want, have the power to lobby for the ability to make them expensive. Ben, we, we want the, so they can make more money. we want the same thing. We want more people... I mean, I, I assume this is what you want. More people to just be able to compete on a fair playing field with these guys. And, I mean, I, I don't know what's involved in, like, making a drug in, you know, doing any of the testing or pr- chemical production or whatever's involved with that. But, like, I, I mean, just... It doesn't have to... Yeah. Life doesn't have to be a competition. Society doesn't oh, have to be Oh, that's where I totally disagree. I, at last, we're at the true disagreement between us. This is where we totally disagree. Life will always be a competition as far as I understand it. <sighs> and and I think it's naive to believe otherwise. The human desires yeah. are infinite. Just is it's fundamental to human nature. You would think you would think that it's naive to think that things could be good. I mean, you're framing it that way. I'm framing you as being unrealistic about human nature. So who's right? I guess yeah. everyone has their own view on that. Okay. I'm depressed. Thanks well, for listening to TBAP, Two Best Brothers Bitch About Politics, uh, the weekly podcast <laughs> show here on The Procrastinators. I didn't want to have to do this. <laughs> and what can we do to not do this again? I would love you, to do that. You forced you, me. I forced you, you by being Nate, ignorant. You, you, you always are one half of the conversation. You're like, oh, but but guys, politics, like, oh, this is just terrible. How could this possibly have Munchie, happened? put yourself in my shoes. If at any point I say, look, Ben, I don't want to talk about this. I look like the asshole. So what am I to do? What am I to do? Uh, take the take the bullet for the benefit of the show. I don't show. know whether you look like the asshole. Just or not. Con- just concede that I just concede that I'm right instead of this whole. Well, here's what I think. Oh, but I'm not an you expert. Don't you concede oh, but here's what I, anything. Here's are why you I the expert? With you. Then? Are here, you the here's, expert? Here's why I, should I disagree listen to? with you, not. even though He's I don't not. actually know we anything just about did, it. We just I found I, out that we disagree on our fundamental approach. I think I know more than you do. True, but we disagree on our fundamental understanding. I don't know what I'm talking about. I I think I'm doing that because I am humble, whereas you are not. But, like, Whoa. we totally disagree on our fundamental premise of what human life even is. How could we ever agree on politics, knowing that that's different? This is like a microcosm of the problem with the country in general right now, is that the two you parties know, don't agree on anything. They're funding, fun, they're operating on two fundamental different existences. The, the, the very building blocks, the foundation I, of society <laughs> and life itself is no longer agreed upon by fifty percent of the country. Well, surely it's been this way before. I don't. I. I don't think that every that life has to be built around competition. But I'm not gonna argue too hard, and I will say that mm-hmm. I. Yeah. It, if we're gonna have a competition, yeah, I wish that it would be fair. But it's not. Like the deck is stacked. I, I'm all for making it more fair, man. We agree current, on that. Whoever's. I don't. Okay, you say that, but everything you say works to the contrary of that because the deck is. St- the deck is stacked in the favor of those who are currently winning. And what someone who is like socialist might say is, well, we should stack, we should stack the deck the other way because capitalism itself, you know, stacks the deck. So we got to unstack the deck because that's just fair, right? Because that's fairness. I mean, is it, is it fair fairness. to take the inheritance say, of a guy you, from his you, parents who... And you say, y- yes, because he doesn't fucking deserve it. <sighs> I mean, no one, the, the thing is, no one deserves anything. Life just happens. And, you know, I don't want things to be, uh, life is fundamentally unfair, is my approach no to one, it. No one, deser- uh, no one deserves anything, like, from, from square one. Like, no one is born deserving anything. But when you're born into a society, you necessarily must participate in that society. And yeah. that society is generating wealth, like, on the back of you and everyone else's labor that could provide for everyone. I don't think you deserve it just for being alive, but for your participation in that society, I think you deserve to be taken care of by that society that could do that for you. If the people who were in charge of it decided that's what they wanted to do. I just don't think it's their obligation to do so. I think everyone's got to carve out their I, own shit. All right. They, they made I, that, I they made that, that like... they didn't make that money by themselves, but they get to keep it themselves. Like I, they, you get I, a wage. If you don't like it. the job, don't do the job. If you're not making it's, enough, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's not job. about that. All right. Like the, the idea of inheritance and stuff. Like if I had the choice to be like to have grown up 
in a family with less money, I would not choose it because yeah. why would I? Uh, so like I understand that the, there's like an inherent like I don't want to give up this thing that I have. I don't want to live in a world where my children won't have the benefits that I, you know, can carve out for myself mm -hmm. in the world. But if you know everything was fair and the 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 difference between the very rich and the very poor was a lot, you know, there were like it was a lot more equal. Being um, a, in a poorer family would not even be that bad. I think is what like the ideal is, where sure. even if you're not if you if you're not given like a huge inheritance, or if you didn't grow, you didn't get born into the the correct big wealthy family. If you got born into like the average family, the average family would still be, you know, way better right. than. It currently is, and therefore that, it would that, be fine to not have inheritance be because you know, you'd be still be okay. Average. We don't need we don't need that, to take that, down that, the the top to to raise the bottom. We should be raising the the wealth floor. We don't have to necessarily stifle the wealth yeah. ceiling, because be, if, the, if, the, if if mm -hmm, if yeah. wealth become if like a lot of the things that we all use in a capitalist system is like done in the pursuit of profit. And that is fucked up and bad and wrong because it can lead to a lot of like terrible decisions that are like tunnel vision. When I mean, you get sometimes to it's that wrong, point. But sure. Um, mm -hmm. But like if, if, if you, if you have a, a, a situation where you no longer have any incentive to do anything, like a lot of people are just not going to do things, you know, it, it, it just, it just doesn't seem to make sense to me. To, and that's when the society becomes burdened by those people. And that is bad. That's not good. The, that's what I fear the, about it. The video, the video that that chart that I tweeted came from, like the, my edited version of the chart that showed like, mm -hmm. okay, in, in the video, that final column for the 1% that is like a million times higher. Like it doesn't show the whole, it like chops it up and makes like a block out of yeah, it. Yeah. And it's a little, and it's a little less evocative. Mm -hmm. Right. So I edited it to show that it actually right, is it's how tall it actually is on this bar graph. And it's like, it's like 10 times as high as even like the 90th percentile or as, as the 99th, like the hundredth percentile is like so much higher than even like the, 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 the spike is like hugely exponential. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the point is, like that video is a video, a video on the wealth inequality in America, and uh, they polled people about like what do they think the wealth, uh, like the wealth distribution looks like, and people drew sort of like a sort of a graph that like you know oh there's it kind of levels down at the poor people, mm -hmm. and then you know it starts to rise up in the middle class, and then at the rich there's sort of like there's a, there's a big bump right, so like this is like this is like maybe they're like five or ten time you know they're, they're, they're several times wealthier than the average like middle sure. class like maybe five times wealthy whatever so there's a big bump and then they asked what do you think the wealth disparity should look like and people drew another chart that was like you know more even didn't like the the poorer people were started out higher up right even the poorest were not under the poverty line it went up a little bit in the middle class and then there was still a bump but like a smaller bump right so there was a difference there in the distribution and it turns out that the that was what people thought it was and what people thought it should be. And it turns out that the actual graph is as different from the reality as people think the rea th as people think the reality is from their ideal. And then the, you see the three alongside themselves and like, you know, between from the ideal that people described and then the bump gets bigger in the in what they think the reality is and then the actual real reality is just this huge fucking um asymptotal spike up towards infinity at uh, at the hundredth percent and the point is mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. basically everyone thinks that wealth should be more equitably distributed like almost everybody thinks that and people think that without even knowing they most people don't even realize the direness of how inequitably it is distributed did you know that currently the wealth distribution in America is less equitable than in the days of fucking like Carnegie and uh, Rockefeller, right? Like the the fucking like post industrial revolution. Seems reasonable. Yeah, the days of the robber barons. It is worse than that now. It's a nightmare. Um, we're living in hell. That's all f makes sense. It's perfectly reasonable. But I I just remain at the position of I don't think disparate dispar disparateness or whatever in wealth is equivalent like I, i'm all for setting the rules fin that you, finish that sentence what is it not equivalent it's to? not equivalent to a moral crime because uh, we, let's set the rules so that you can't spend money on things that are like bad for the world or whatever i'm all for that 
but to just like mm-hmm. to take the money that's that is produced by them. I mean, do I think that they necessarily deserve all of it? I'm sure that's not true. So let's identify the specific okay. ways that ill-gotten gains have been obtained, and let's take that, I guess, at, as like a crime that's been committed. I just have no interest in taking money from people who just who earned it legitimately by playing <sighs> the rules. You just you just said they probably didn't earn it legitimately. No, I said, said that. that I'm sure. Uh, well, I'm not. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm sure. I'm sure that there has been some money gained illegitimately. Uh, but it, it, a lot of this would be on how you define illegitimately. I have a sneaking suspicion yes, we would define we're, we're it differently. We're not going to agree. We're not going to agree on that. So I'm not even going to argue. Have you not with, said with you on that? Profit is theft in the past because I think that right there shows our difference. Uh, profit is exploitation. Okay. Well, well, not always, but a lot. Okay. Look, let's leave that. Let me just ask you this. Okay. Um. In the days of the robber barons, right? Fucking, I don't, my history's muddled, but the point is, like, we had monopolies, we had robber barons, we had, like, huge wealth inequality, fucking, like, Teddy Roosevelt or whatever, you know, him and his brain trust, you know, passed trust-busting laws, they busted up the trusts and such, and, and, and you know, they fucking- we should do that now. And we, you know, y- yeah, okay, we should do that now, and, uh, you know- the way that you do that is you have to have a power that is more powerful than these big corporations that can enforce that. And I know you love small government. In theory, I understand. Mm. But the only power on earth that could possibly do that is the government, right? Uh, and that's, that's why I agree. That's, the, that's okay. our only but, hope. But there are certain problem. functions the government should do. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Or, yeah, I mean, or a violent people's revolt. I don't particularly want that, but that's another well, option. Okay, it here's is an the, option. Here's the problem with the government, right? Is that you the the situation we're in right now that makes like corporate like uh uh control like like being able to like fight back against the issues you're talking about is that uh the government is a national power, corporations are worldwide. So like we can make all the laws, mm-hmm. put all the laws on the books that we want, saying like, oh, Amazon, fuck you, you're paying taxes now, the loopholes are closed. Uh, we're breaking up Google, whatever. Like the the government can go in and try and make rules like that and make legislation. Google and Amazon will just leave. We'll just leave the country. They all they already operate um, internationally. Right. It's already that's, cheaper. That's exactly my point. So like they have the resources clearly to 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 yeah. to get out of the jurisdiction of the United States law. So you would, in order to actually solve this problem, you would have to have a one world government. And I know that's like the dream for a lot of people on the left. They want to get rid of the nation state. Uh, but that creates a lot of other problems. And this is where I think Nate is right in saying that like this is an incredibly complicated issue because of the domino effect of changing these things when you're dealing with powers this massive and this a- able to get around what we feel like as normal people, like ironclad law, right? Like the, we are governed by U.S. law. Corporations, not so much. They have the power and the ability to leave the United States entirely and no longer be bound I mean, by national law. A- With- Am- Amazon is a, is a it's a United States based corporation. Like, if we said, you know, maybe Yang gets elected, we're like, okay, mm-hmm. value added tax. There's a value added tax on Amazon's profits now. That's there's no loopholes for that. They have to pay it. And and Bezos says. Well, in that case, I'm just going to leave. I mean, they can't just leave, right? That would be like, maybe not treason, but it would be like, that would be tax evasion. And he would be an international fugitive if he did that. I don't, I mean, I'm not an expert, but I I don't know if that's the case. I I would assume if you're running a business, you can relocate it. I mean, yeah, probably have to pay. I mean, didn't Trump put boy. something in like a, I mean, a, with, a thing where you have to pay if you're trying to leave your company from the U.S. or something? Sure, to relocate? I mean, even, I'm sure that fine would be that inconsequential be compared to the damage yeah. that that a radical uh, restructuring of corporate law in the United States would entail. So I think a lot of people would probably pay that fee and leave if that was the case. Maybe. I mean, that's you know the what? same. That's the same know. issue Fucking... we're talking about with like Amazon's new headquarters in New York. It was like a microcosm of what we're talking about. You know, but states I, instead I, of countries. I honestly. You know, I don't think it would be as simple as just, oh, we, we impose a tax, Amazon. Le-. Like, like operating in the United States is still beneficial. Like, they, yeah, like I don't think they would just up and leave. Well, it, it's beneficial e- right if, now. Even if they did. With, yeah. these, with this new laws well, he, in place, like, the, 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 someone's balancing the books. And at some point, if we tip the scale too much, of course, they're going to pack up and take off. But that that's just, 
That's just appeasement. That's just saying, let the fucking... Okay, I'm sorry for my sorry for my evocative language that I'm sure people have a big problem with. That's just <laughs> saying to the, to the tyrant, the, like, go, okay, we better just let you fucking have your way with us. Better just let you exploit us as much as you want. Because if we do anything about it, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll leave. You know, you'll fuck us over. Like, you'll take like your bowl no, that's just not a tenable mode of operation okay i mean, I mean you, no you, i'm you i want you, i want there to be I, reform. I get what you're saying i get what you're saying probably it would be bad prob i mean would well here's the thing would the united states even lose anything if amazon fucked off because they don't even pay taxes so like fuck leave them well i don't think it's that simple surely there's some you know benefit right, here, to the here's, economy here's like a, a a simple question to this complex situation right um would you be more in favor of like a potential like domino effect catastrophe or like some some you know unforeseen bad consequences but also change or would you prefer stagnation um like if there's a choice like how much do you care in a, it, like I mean, would you, you gotta... care that there's a change uh even if it may fuck things up i mean you're we well, guess we're assuming that this is like what we would consider a good change is this is this question um, for me specifically? Uh, it's for anyone. Like like the, 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 a lot of what these complicate uh, complex things come down to is like, do you care enough about potentially damaging other things that you may not have, be foreseeing to like upset the system, or are you scared? too scared to do any of that or not scared but like yeah. you're too wary to ch uh, you know change anything for fear of fucking up something unforeseen uh i mean it depends it, like i mean depends how bad we're talking you well, know? The, the point is that is that it's unforeseen, and you you're not sure exactly. Nobody, unless you're like a super genius, you'd never be able to have all the information and I mean, make at the, the correct decision. At the moment, I would say, yeah, we better fucking shake things up now because things are bad and they're just getting worse. So yeah, I mean, I guess if you if you handed me the dice and said you you feel unlucky, punk, yeah, I'd roll them. I think now's a good time to roll them because because you know the status quo is bad and and getting badder so yes i think i'd Cha also change please be in that. is the main okay. bad thing that you're like, identifying change, change just... seems just more more um i mean i guess interesting but that's not a good reason but like sure uh, politics has been like the same old shit my entire life i've never really noticed anything mm -hmm. being like actually different like Trump is the the most recent thing that was like whoa huh yeah well, what do you know uh, in, yeah. in Brexit He's very in different case, I suppose that's that's not Bre interesting Brexit is also a thing way. I don't really want Brexit to happen I know it will be bad but one part of me is like that's different I'd I'd prefer different honestly mm -hmm. I mean yeah I would also prefer good <laughs> yeah for for example um yeah okay. Well, cool. Yeah, roll them. Roll them bones. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I don't want a violent revolution, but if there was one, and the result was, you know, student loan debt forgiveness universal health care at the cost of, I don't know, maybe some beheadings... <laughs> Stra I straight up think that's probably worth it. I straight Revol up think that's worth it because people because people actually die under like lack of Medicare right now. Uh, revolutions don't go the way people say that they will. What? While fighting, I mean, yeah. Oh, well, no. I'm I'm posing I'm posing the hypothetical scenario of there is a violent uprising and the only measurable uh, consequences of that are student loan debt forgiveness, universal health, uh, single payer health care. Yeah, I would take that deal. Um, okay, but. I, That's I like need to leave right now. Highly specific. Okay. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I, uh, I need to leave right now. I did not expect this podcast to go on for two hours and thirty-five minutes before uh, voicemails. Yeah. Uh, this is a long sorry, I have to oh, dip. God. Okay, uh, but yes, yeah. understandable. Sorry, uh, cool. we happy birthday, you yeah. fuck. We're... Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's my birthday. I don't know whether I mentioned not. that. No, uh, I don't think so. Happy birthday, you. I'm jerk. 26. I'm. I'm like. I'm like. 
like I'm I'm just it's just, it's, just a boring number. It's, it's the right, one goodbye. year anniversary of you being able to rent a car without paying an additional young driver's fee in the United States. <laughs> hey. Hey. All right. Sit. All right. Well, uh, all right, goodbye see you later. Now. Later. Uh, should we just see do the later. voicemails now? Unless anyone's got any more oh, to God. say about all there's, that. There's, we could go on for hours, honestly. I gotta tell you, and not have, only and do have. I not have anything more to say right now, it's that I'm so, I so wish we didn't do these things because you everyone's sure, so you sure bored argue by them. Pretty, you sure argue pretty fervently for someone who has nothing to say about it. it it's not that I have nothing to say. It's that I am so aware that no one wants to hear what I have to say. That's what I'm sensing. I think it, I think the I would say that the audience is split. T Bap politics literally went. Uh, literally went, Nate. Uh, I got. Literally I, I mean, I gotta tell you, Ben. I just straight up don't. I don't want that to exist. Uh, is my <laughs> main know. concern. Just I, do it yourself, I, man. Just get whoever you want. That, that's that's just another. That's just one more. That's one more fundamental. Uh, difference in our worldviews that will probably never be reconciled <laughs> is the desire for two best brothers bitch about politics. I, I, to I exist. think you're right. I think that is very true. Mm. Uh, I, you know, uh, I, I will say on the subject, it's just that I mean, maybe I'm just a coward and am too complacent. But uh, frankly, I just don't want to fuck up my life by discussing politics and things I have no idea about and don't even have the interest well, to learn sure about. Done a great job of doing exactly that like why do you 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 fucking fight me on these things and then you'll be like oh but i don't know what i'm talking about i just think and then you'll fight some more about I, it uh, i mean like, do, do you everything do you i say an opinion or not everything i say i believe i just don't think anyone like uh, whatever they care about my opinion they shouldn't though because i'm uneducated this is just like my life assessments i have not studied any of this i listen to people who know more sometimes and they think different than me maybe they're right i don't know uh I, why would my opinion has no value in politics so i'm just aware that i'm just wasting everybody's time with my discussion about it so i believe everything i say i just think that no one should care <laughs> That, and and I'm I'm really not trying to make myself sound cool or anything like that. It's just that I am ignorant, and that's unfortunate. I mean, I guess listen to Ben since he claims to know more. I mean, take I, his word for it. I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I think I know some things, and they have led me to some pretty strong opinions about some things. Uh, I I want to say enough. on the record that even though in the past and even still now I've. I don't want to make it seem like I've been like a real like vocal opponent to like the idea of politics being presented because frankly I think that's pretty annoying. Uh, it, it, Ben, if you remember the last PCP when I just like brought up something that was like tangentially related to politics, everyone started groaning in chat, which I thought was pretty uh immature and lame and was, dumb. Was I was I on that one? Uh, well, dude, can you blame them? RCK. We've been inundating them with oh, our politics oh, yeah. talk for months now. Uh, uh, of course, you mean well, you, you mean the, you mean the audience understand. started groaning? Yeah. Wait, who started groaning? The audience? Yeah. Yeah. yeah fuck them. Uh, fuck the well, audience. I, I'm I'm not I, I'm I emphasize with that. I understand, uh, but I do just want to say. That Ben, you've actually yeah. been you you did you did pretty good this time actually. You were pretty like you know eloquent, smart. Yeah, you were eloquent. You were. You know what? I feel like in the past I have sometimes not gotten my point across adequately. I don't really feel like that this time. At the very least, I feel like I said everything I needed to say and made all the points I wanted to make. I feel so like you good. got into Thank actual you. specifics and you actually like argued your point. You know. You know. Maybe like early in this year, right? In the in the in the in the 2016 lead up to the 20, 2020 primaries, I'm like I don't want a repeat of last time. I don't want it to go down another year that I didn't vote in the primaries. Uh, and I started thinking about all this stuff and I started getting into it and I have I feel like I have grown in my understanding quite a bit, right? I started out with some vague notions of what I thought was right and probably just and I and I've looked into it more and I have more facts and logic uh to uh, uh to own people with now I, I am a political history nerd i love the idea of orators and i love the ideas of of intrigue and debate they're extremely romantic to me and i've always really highly valued them the reason why i would be annoyed with the pcp of uh, talking discussed politics is because it felt like people very vehemently like arguing things that they know nothing about and that have went very little thought into them <laughs> Uh, and so that's why I would get annoyed. But 
I feel like, you know what, Ben? You 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 at least understand what you're saying. You know, you yes. have reasons to believe them. Yes. And you know, yes. I'm curious. How much time do you guys devote to politics on RFCK? Basically on zero. RFCK? Why can't Not that, that be this? Why can't that be here? <laughs> You, you, Nate's jelly. Why don't you put all Nate's, your politics in RFCK? That sounds great. I, 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 I have no wish to argue politics or to discuss them. Nate, you are the half of this. I don't understand what you don't understand about this. You are the essential component that makes politics happen on the PCP. This you is like that moment at the end of Fight Club. You're right. I am uh, uh, the name of that. I am Tyler Durden. Tyler, Tyler Durden. I need to kill did, myself did to remove Durden? me from the situation okay. so this never, ever happens again. It, 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 I, I, I think politics are intriguing. And I do not think they're an inherent evil. I think they are oftentimes annoying on this show. I think they are. I think that politics are a big general. opiate for the masses as a distraction from actually fixing their lives in meaningful ways. This is how I view politics. What? Yeah, that's what? right. That's right. Oh, we can okay. all jack our you dicks know, about like, oh my God, this tax policy. Meanwhile, you should go fucking, I don't know, pick up a second shift so you can pay for your daughter's fucking college or something. And uh, uh, as, as if taxes don't too, affect too, what too, you're able too, to pay too bad, for. Too bad, you'll need to, too bad you'll need to work to 36 say, hours a day in order, to, uh, in order to actually do that because uh, the minimum wage is only like $10. Why would you ever think that the minimum wage should be what you should earn to support a family? What? That's like that's that's the entry level some people baby don't, level some people some people don't have like degrees. Well that's not you can get a good deep better job without a make, degree. Well, okay, not everyone some people are gonna have to work minimum wage jobs, right? Uh well I I, I they should work out of it eventually. You can, not everyone can work out of it. I mean I'm sure I'm it's sure impossible. that's true. I'm sure that's true. Um well, I I hope they live their life realistically. Then I guess. Yeah, fuck college. I mean, I agree. I'm college is for people who are going to do something useful with it, not just waste a bunch of money. Well, sure. Um, Munchie, you're my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I mean, you know. I feel like you you earned it this time, and you know what I and you know what Ben I I want you to appreciate because I do not say that lightly. Thank you. Because I, uh, well, you know, because you, know, you you annoy yeah. me all the time every day, and you know what? You didn't annoy me even a little bit this time. The, cr the the constant crunching of my unsalted cashews, just just grinding of my teeth, keeps you up at night. I know. Uh, you know, I know people have complained about it in the comments, like people like us talking about this and not knowing what we're talking about. I'd like to think that those are, for me personally, those are growing pains in which I was still trying to like hash out, you know, knowledge. I'm getting there. I, I don't think I'm it's necessary. I'm like, getting there. I, I, I don't think it's necessary that everything you say align with my or everyone else's opinion. I think the only thing that matters in debates like this are the fact that you are eloquent and explain yourself in a reasonable sort of way. Uh, you still are extremely vitriolic and angry and and mean yes. for no reason, which is something to work on. Yes. But you know what? That's yes. that will all work out. Yes. In the end. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, we don't have to. Thank you for patting me on the back, mm -hmm. but let's let's end it. Uh, should we? I don't know anything else. Uh, the the vo the voicemails are here. And Nate, I believe you said that these are terrible. So we uh, do you want to do them? No, no. What? Well, well, I said that the as I was going through them, the everyone be Wait, please be advised. You, you, the selection of voicemails was was particularly bad this time. There was like, uh, you know, you know who you are. If you left a voicemail, it was like kind of okay. I'm not playing it for a reason. Um, so just be aware of that. You know, I, I was re I was questioning myself. <laughs> I was thinking, am How? I like in a bad yeah. mood? Is there something wrong with me that like I'm enjoying these less than normal? Uh, I don't think so. Mm. I think it's you, not me. Uh, humble, humble voicemail callers. It's, it's like that. It's like that meme of Skinner. Uh, being like, hmm, is it? Could I be out of touch? Mm. No, it's the voicemails. <laughs> the difference being in that the joke was that he was wrong about that, but I'm right about this. Is my is my <laughs> yeah. conclusion? No, yeah, no. I'm sure the voicemails are terrible. And listen, people, uh, look, I, nobody, nothing was like offensively bad or terrible, but like some people, you went on way too long. 
you, uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm doing this for your benefit, speak pipe listener people, so that you will get on. It was too long and boring and didn't get to the point. It was like overly personal and not in an interesting way. And we have personal stuff on here that was entertaining. So juxtapose this to your voicemail. I don't know. Like it just, just a lack of entertainment value was the main thing. So I'm not trying to berate anybody. I'm simply giving you feedback on why you didn't get in. So that you can improve in the future if you care to be on, of which you don't have to be. You owe us nothing. So there you go. That's uh, that's it. Let's uh, let's go to the first one, though, because I, I have four that were, you know, they were okay. They were okay. Let's, uh, let's, you know what? This one sucked. I'm skipping this one, actually. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> so we're down to, <laughs> we're down to three. With the bang. We're, we're down oh, to three. Oh, God. I'm, I can't wait. All right, this is from uh, Bus Ride Tony. Let's let's hear what Bus Ride uh, Tony has to say. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, go. I know that name. Where do I know that Hello, name? Hello, I am Bus Ride Tony. Oh, God. And after 92 years, I'm finally a teenager. And that's right, today I turned 113 years old. <laughs> Just keep like the spirit, like that's how I know. Finally. Finally, submit my application to join the <laughs> CP. Oh, of course. Oh. If you need He's to gotcha. contact me, <laughs> I look like a man who is always waiting for the bus, <laughs> but there's never a bus stop near me. Is that Victor? It's so sad. Sounds like Victor. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. I await my summons. Oh my God! Shut up. All right. Uh, <laughs> Thank bus, you. Okay. <laughs> First of all, please don't stop. But also, why do? Why does everyone call in to be on the P- Teen CP on the TC? It's the new meme, like, dude. Like, no one knows the where wave the Teen of the future. CP is. It, it, well, okay. Listen, the Teen CP is objectively superior. Hashtag Where's the Teen CP? Uh, well, uh, multiple are out already. Check them on my channel. I guess it's just another uh, podcast. So wait, Munchy, stop. So they're on Munchy Wears Tiny Hats on YouTube. They're on your channel. That's where they are. Yes. Well, I don't know why you're like, you're I, like, don't even focus on that one I, detail. I, I actually did not know. Right? What? <laughs> what? I knew, I knew they were out and I did not know where they are. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. Now you know. There, now there, are, know. Two, uh, there are two episodes of the Teen CP, soon to be a third, on my channel. Uh, you can yeah. go watch them. People really, really, really seem to resonate with them and are super excited about them, which I'm super excited about as well. It's pretty cool. Well, the Teen CP is a PCP meme, but it is its own show. There's, there's oh both yeah, those no, no, no. It, it, it's it's its own show for disgruntled uh, PCP fans who are also teens. Indeed, aka me. Such as our boy Bus Ride Tony or whatever the fuck his name was. No, uh, no, no. He's yeah, well, not well, on. What, he wants to be on. What do you mean? I mean, he, he's, he's, he's a eligible. Well, okay, well, what's your what's your policy on um, centenarian teen centenarian? Indeed. Uh, our policy is that we take everything on a case by case basis because we are Zoomers, aka maximum nuance, and mm. there is uh, no objective reality. So we will review him. Odds are, though, we will say "get fucked" and "you're gay," though. So okay, I am. I am, by the way, coining that term. Uh, if you are a centenarian, is a person who is over a hundred years old. So if you are in your hundred and tens, you are a centenarian. Oh, that's good. That is mine. I get royalties for that every time. There's you say a couple it. of those. A couple of people have lived that long. I think the oldest person ever was 130 yeah. something. I don't know, whatever. Um yeah, no, there you know there's like research that suggests that like this is depressing, but yeah. like um uh like like it's it's genetic, like whether you will live to be like super old is like pretty much just genetic. Mm, okay. Like it runs in like it runs in families and stuff. That, no, that's yeah, right. that's a good right. thing because we've mapped the human genome. It's only a matter of time before you can genetically engineer immortality. We're getting there. We might Well, it's a good thing for the next generation, but it sucks for me. Yeah, we're probably not gonna make it. Maybe no, we will. Fuck we'll off. See. I'm I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm I'm optimistic. He's right. He's 2027 not, is when Deus Ex brings in fucking robot bodies. So like we're we're getting close. We have seven more Th- years. That's fair. That's fair. I'm uh I'm not even like uh, my whole thing. I don't know if I said that this episode about how immortality. I'm a little skeptical of it as a like as a viability for the human species. But it's a totally different ball game if we've got like interstellar travel and like we've got colonies. Like if you can just go be immortal elsewhere, mm. that's fine. I'm worried about like clogging up earth with old people who should be dead. But Pro, such as myself. You're immortal. Con, you're banished to the moon for eternity. The moon's all right. I I'd, I'd take it's it. It's not bad. I'd well, I, as long as I can kill myself if I want to, the moon, then you know, the that's dumpster a, well, of the I, earth. I, there 
I mean, for all of eternity on the moon, that's not that bad. Theoretically, there would be stuff on the moon at some point. Dude, it'd be, it'd be like playing Minecraft. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, that sounds good. You could just... You can just make shit out of moon. All right, two more voicemails. The moon's so yeah, we got two super more. fucking long. I have a pizza. I need to go to pizza. Just fucking. Oh, hurry he's got up. a pizza. Okay, all right. Uh, this this mail is from L M A O Lamau. <laughs> Let's see what Lamau has for us. Go. Yo, what's up, PCP? Uh, what's up? Here to ask some relationship advice because that's oh, been okay. Oh, yes. Good. Interesting. Um, as much as we are politics, what experts. I'm wondering <laughs> is. I got this chick who's into me, and she wants to, like... Uh-huh. Don't say chick. ...date and stuff, but mm. I don't really <laughs> want to because my Sick. life is, like, super busy <laughs> with, like, um, just going into college now and, like, uh-huh. all that kind of stuff. And so I don't even want to, like, deal with girls right now. So my mm-hmm. question is, how do I ditch this chick without, like... <laughs> Being well, okay. <laughs> a rude dude. Uh, okay. All right. That's too. That's too. I've easy. got the answer. It's a three-word answer. Uh, these little phrases will serve you well in your life. Pump and dump, my dude. This is the way to do it. <laughs> this is the way you should live your life. Uh, uh, that's all there is to it. Before, before you said, "How do I ditch this chick?" I thought I was just like, yeah. "Oh, you know, like I just, I just want to work on my craft." You know, I, I, just I know, have right? Time for a so how do I dump this fucking bitch in the gutter? Yeah, this like, is a weird question. Well, he, he said, pun. "How does he do it?" I think he wants to do it in a nice yeah. way. And he didn't like sound like a nice way. Just, no, just sounds, literally just nice tell line. her what you yeah. told yeah, us in honesty. this voice. Just play yeah, this yeah, play literally. this voicemail. Your for reasoning yeah. isn't no, even mean. It's totally pragmatic. No. I, I guess yeah, like completely a, a girl might feel bad that a guy isn't willing to displace his time on other things to make I guess that is a negative thing. You're saying your time is more valuable. But just, you know, you can say I well, like you, you're nice, no, but Jerry, I got stuff to do. You know? This is an easy one. Relationships are a relationship that you have to foster and you have to put time into. I mean, relationships are like a, a lot of work and just pure time. You like, yeah. if you don't have that time, then it just wouldn't be good for either of you. I mean, the relationship would falter and it, honestly, it wouldn't be a good time. Honestly, so just tell I her. think it's a. Mar- I mean, I'm a. Assu- I mean, this guy says he's applying for college. Yeah, right? I think, I think so. it's probably a. Mar- I think it's a mark of this person's maturity that they would consider that and be like, well, you know, a relationship will eat into my free time. Can I afford it? Right? Like, like to even ask that I, question. I suspect, like, you know, you're, you're thinking, yeah. you're, you're, you're thinking, you're thinking the right thing. Considering this guy and, and his, the life situation he's in, I suspect he's not that into her anyway. Um, so, well, I mean, that seems yeah. clear. So, Pro- probably. What, what are you losing here, dude? I mean, uh, there's nothing wrong with a good old pump and dump every once in a while. So keep that in the back burner. Sure. If, uh, but if she wants to know why you won't be her BF, yes. just tell her you're bit. Bu- just tell her you're busy and you can't fucking. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I would I at mean, least that's aim really to lose the best like yeah. scenario. I think for basically it, like any situation, like any relationship, yeah, it's honesty. Just to be honest, yeah. yeah. But but don't be afraid to emotionally manipulate her to at least lose your hand holding virginity. Mm. I would definitely go for that. That's an easy one. Uh, do that. Mm. <laughs> Aim for that mm. high bar. Gaslighting too. <laughs> gaslighting. Oh yeah, Color definitely crazy. recommend gaslighting. <laughs> yeah, and don't be afraid to. If she ever gives you guff, go in her face and and make rapid hand motions. Go nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. That's a good one for for confusing. <laughs> Love nightmares. Her. Um. All right. Next mail is okay. This is our last one. Uh, other barely passable one. This is requiem for a meme. Let's hear what he has for us. <laughs> go. Actually, didn't realize there was a ninety second rule before yeah, I yeah, yeah. decided uh, to send this, this little voicemail. Sorry, this, the equivalent of Otherwise, sorry, I haven't made exactly. a video in a while. Much, much longer and in detailed story. You're wasting your ninety seconds. You're wasting your ninety seconds. It's okay. The important out. part, which is, yeah, my ex-girlfriend is absolutely insane and keeps harassing me. I've mm. blocked her on all social media. Uh, I've blocked all her friends on social media. But she keeps showing up to the place I work, which is a movie oh. theater. She keeps showing up for no reason over and over again just to talk to me. She's got all her friends doing mm. it. Her friends will show up and buy bottles of water, just bottles oh, of whoa. water, and then leave. It's a movie theater I work at. You know, <laughs> uh, she's apparently hmm. spreading rumors about me and how I've got, like, what? a small penis, which uh, I, you know, oh, whatever. Shit. Oh, whoa, she, you know, she's constantly <laughs> harassing me. I am 18 years old. This girl is 17 years old. She is dating mm. a 22-year-old opioid addict. Okay. Fucking, <laughs> I don't what, know what, what sort you know, of times you live in? Yeah. yeah for a dream over here you know it's you know it's it's quite a bit of drama so tell me procrastinators because 
you know, you guys seem to be geniuses when it comes to women, clearly. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's us. Undisputed kings of dealing yes. with femininity. Yes. So please, how do I handle this absolutely insane ex-girlfriend? Keeps showing up at my work, keeps, you know, mm-hmm. adding me on mm-hmm. social media, trying to get her boyfriend to attack me. You know, how do I deal with this oh, situation no. without what? shooting he was, someone? He was like, he's, he's like, that's about where wait, I'm at. He's like sweating right now. Okay. Oh, he's God. like, is like this a, while he was recording that, like he was being threatened at that very moment. That guy was a <laughs> gunpoint that entire is, fucking is, voice, is, man. Is this a... Like, is this a meme? Yeah, it, yeah, it, so, it sounded no. so cartoonish. It must be a joke. It's, it's, I, I okay, Maybe. I don't know because I don't really remember, but I, th- I think he might be describing the plot of Requiem for a Dream. No, no, no. I, I've seen Requiem for a Dream. It's just about a heroin addict. Uh, there, there's no like stalker okay. girlfriend it's in Requiem for a Dream. It's, I don't think. Been a while. Okay. I mean, the way he's like laughing as he talks, like it he's doesn't really laughing. sound he's like. He's scared well, for his I, life. I mean, he sounded like he could, was barely on the. Breaking point it it sounded like he was like walking somewhere, and he's. I mean, not, this he's kind of this un, is a pretty un, un, silly. Un this is a pretty silly situation. I mean, it, it's kind of it's hard to know how serious it is. I'm guessing it, based on it? his demeanor, it's not like like life or death, but could be. Di- it's absolutely disturbing. It seems to me. So fair, it, yeah. fair enough. Well, Definitely. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is. It is a disturbing situation. I could. But that's why it's to me. It sounds like he's laughing when he's uh, okay. Let, let's just assume he's serious. If we just assume that, yeah, it's yeah. Serious. Okay, let's take it on good yeah. faith and. It, Answered as though it is serious and maybe. I've never been in um, this situation, but it seems pretty yeah, fucked up. Yeah, this seems ex- like very extreme to the point of like, like you know, like normal like reason doesn't seem like it has a place here. It, like, it's weird to me I, that I he just he slips in at the end. Is, he just puts in at the end, like, oh yeah, she's sending her boyfriend to like fight me. It's like, whoa, well, why isn't that front yeah, and yeah, center? Yeah, that's pretty that, crazy. That seems like the that's that was the tipping point. Okay, yeah, um, but yeah. like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um. The the new boyfriend's a fucking cuck if he's doing that. Mm-hmm. If she if 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 his girlfriend is like, dude, my ex is such a bitch, go fight. I don't him. like to even think about that the fact like, that girls I date used to have exes. I like to disassociate from my body <laughs> and from that reality. Yeah, you know, sure. so sure. Im- Im- imagine maybe it's imagine even better to beat date- them up though. That's like a, how to win over them long term. <laughs> Im- imagine you're dating a girl and she's like, my ex is such an asshole. Go fuck with yeah. him. Like, how much of a fucking Roger, loser do you Roger do that. Yeah. That's, that's big yeah. loser activity. But my, 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 ex, my ex was so abusive. He was so toxic. Go fuck with him and his chody little friend. Just make me post about him on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good idea. Good okay, idea. well, like, um, I mean, so, is there... Okay, well, 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 he says he says attack. What do you mean by attack? Do you mean, like, insult? Do you mean physically attack? Do you mean... I'm guessing like, physical is, intimidation, but... Is it criminal? If it's criminal, I think he could probably file for a restraining order. I, just the general um, things he's talking about sounds like it's already grains for a restraining order against yeah. the girl. I mean, th- this uh, guy's it, probably it, never well, filed her, one, her, so... Her sh- her showing up to his place of work, her friends coming to his place of work and buying water bottles. I don't know if that is like severe enough. It's hard to that say. You would need to, that, yeah. that you could take legal action about it. And I mean, like, who? Okay. I get that it's probably stressful, mm-hmm. but like, who are they really hurting? They're just showing up and spending money at your place of business. Well, like, they're talking to him. What's. They're trying to talk to him. Okay. About what? Uh, yeah, it, hmm. I wasn't clear. It sounded almost like they were trying to talk to him, like to get him to get back with the girl at first. But then it, the thing about the boyfriend was well, like, oh, okay, I think no, it seems like a uh, well, okay, like the, the spreading campaign. rumors is the is is a pretty vicious thing to do about like small dick, or whatever. I mean, okay, there's there's mm-hmm. this is this is a, a man's area where a man has no. Like, a man can't fight back on this battle. There's nothing you can do other than, like, get over it. Anything you do makes you look... Like, you can say, no, I've got a huge dick. You look like you have a small dick. You can... I don't know. uh, There's no way to win. There's no way to win. So, Mm -hmm. all you can do is... Try to get people to understand in whatever capacity that, like, this person is just coming from bad faith. Like, don't even specifically refute the claim because that just looks pathetic. Just be like, look... This was my girlfriend. I dumped her or whatever. She's just mad at me. Like, nothing she says is real or serious, assuming that's true. You know, you know, I mean, this is a, you know, this is a, this is a post breakup scenario. Yeah. Like, I think people kind of get that, like, there is, can be bad blood there. Yes. And, like, if, if one of the, if people are talking shit about each other after they break up, like, that's normal and mm. not, like, cause for alarm. That's true. You that's know? That's true. And I'm not saying, like, oh, get over it. Like, yeah, I get how that would suck. I'm just mm-hmm. saying people will hear that and be like, 
yeah, shit talking her ex. That's to be expected. Yeah, I, I personally, I never take any of these claims of like small dick. I don't think I've ever taken it seriously once in my life. And some of those people probably have small dicks, but it's just like probably. you know, St- statistically, statistically, it's a certainty. Pro- it's a certainty. St- statistically, probably half of them are at or below the average. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> uh, okay, so on the on the one hand, Ben's point is good to like if these things are concerning you. Don't try, like, don't be overly concerned because it's probably the, less bad the, than you you're, imagine. You're right, Nate. You're right. This is, this, really, this is out of your control. You can't control mm-hmm. what she does. Oh, that's definitely um, true. But if, if she's, like, but stalking I, but, him, but though. Take, but take comfort. Take comfort in the fact yeah. that other people probably are just hearing this, like, eh, yeah, shit talking. That, that's the I, thing. I would say, um, I don't know your circumstance yeah. exactly, but I would involve either my parents or possibly the police if you think it's at that level. It never hurts to just talk to the police and tell them your situation if you think it's fucked up. Yeah, the worst thing they'll say yeah, is, like, yeah, sorry, yeah. dude, we can't help you. And, like, there's no shame in that if you feel either scared or, you know, like, this is going if, beyond what's I reasonable. Think- I feel like if you do talk to the police and like have a record that you did, it like lays the foundation later for like if some if something does happen and there's like a more serious like threat, it like makes it more credible like late in the future. If you're like, okay, I filed a report before. Nothing so happened, so when they're when they're again, sifting through like repeat behavior. when they're sifting through like your bloodied remains on the side of the road, you can rest assured that they will see that police paper trail and they'll be like, "We got a suspect. We got it under control." <laughs> so that's you know, yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good to have. That will so, give you much comfort um, as she pulls out the I'm, knife. I guess the you know it's kind of unfortunate. I guess the only the only actionable thing here is if it's not that bad. If it's if they're not doing anything criminal. Mm. Try not to worry about it. If they are, go to the police. Yeah. Well, I mean, it seems pretty obvious, right? Right? Yeah. There's nothing groundbreaking I, I there, think the like, most useful that, thing I mean, we've said is the that, reassurance that people don't take this that seriously anyway. I think that'll be comforting, They definitely hopefully. take it less seriously than you yeah, do. Yeah, that, that's for sure. Gu- well, guaranteed. Uh, I, I, I think that we're all missing a vital component here, is that yeah. we're all like trying to like make it so that we make the woman not want to come and like you know ruin his life and his uh-huh. work. Uh, but we need to make it so that she doesn't want to. And how can you convince someone to not fuck with another person? Mm. Well, you have to show them that the person that might be the object of their uh, hatred has friends in high places. And what higher friends mm. in higher places than the Procrastinators podcast? Oh, so I say bye. Buy some of our merch, maybe just the I'm being cool. <laughs> and then, and then they'll know, oh, fuck, this guy's rolling with oh, Nate, best guy ever. That's I'm the best advice I've heard all day, God damn it. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Mm-hmm. See, yeah. you don't need big Show, government you know, to solve they, this they problem for you. You just best, need cold, hard capitalism, baby. That's the way. The, That's the way. The best revenge is living well, so show them you're living the high life with some Teespring shirts from patreon.com slash the procrastinators or You know, I feel, I feel bad for this guy, but frankly, by his demeanor, it doesn't sound like it was that serious, so I'm not that worried about not, not I, being I have no overly. idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, we got no idea. Let us know next week. I'm a little interested in this. If this is, uh, I guess this you know, is why he better. was frustrated with the 90 second limit. There was clearly more nuance to the story. You know, that's fair. That's fair. You know, I'll, is, isn't there always? If, if people have always, messages though? that are good and are longer than 90 minutes, like 90 seconds, I will. Uh, there's been times when I will play a two parter if it's good enough, but it has to be good enough. So you know, keep that in mind. Um, all right, whatever. He's got enough information from us. Talk to, talk to people in your life. Yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Three hours. Three hour podcast. Jesus Christ. Almost. Yep. Just under there. Two, two hours and 55 minutes, please. Ooh, that's almost as many, uh, bits as there are in a bite. 256, I think. How nice. We're, we're 40 seconds away. Let's, we better wrap up quickly before we get there. Uh, Mm patreon.com slash the procrastinators. Uh, $1 discord, $5 bonus episodes, of which there are 27 new bonus episode coming out a few days ago from when you've heard this. And I'll tell you what it is. It's the summer cast. It's summertime. And we're talking about all things sunshiny. Summertime, I love the hair. By the time you hear this, ladies and gentlemen, I will have gone to a real life water park, which I have plans to go do no. in real life. Where I will certainly are vlog. With, are you going with Sai? Oh my God, Sai is not allowed on the premises. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a worldwide ban from Sai at water park since uh, uh, since the uh, incident. Th- th- you that know. actually makes two of us think because I also will have gone to a water park. So oh we're my God. water park boy this next episode. Oh, that's I, I can't wait to talk about it. I am yeah, super you know, stoked. You know what? Like water park follow up next episode. Get fucking hyped for yes. that. Oh, I'm, I am hyped for that. Oh, it's on my schedule. I can't wait. Uh, we were gonna go on Monday. 
uh, cause that's like the first day that whatever me and Michelle had free, but I was like, no, that's my first day of work as a full-time YouTuber. I can't go. I ha I can't take a vacation on my first day of work. So we'll go Tuesday. Uh, so that, <laughs> that's, I, I was more comfortable with that. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, oh, follow us at TB Krasner's on Twitter updates and whatnot. Teespring link below. We still got Redbubble stuff. If you Redbubble tickles your fancy for whatever reason, links below. But mostly, just give us your money. That's that's the kind of thing that we encourage Hi. here more than anything. Uh, hey, have a hey, good time. Hey, hey, wait. Yeah. Hey, wait. Mm -hmm. I just want to let you know that if you're living in Europe, uh, yesterday mm. I was in London with. Me, uh, you know, I, I was there in <laughs> London, the it. hypocrite, and and you weren't there. Oh, and you weren't there. So uh, good fuck. Time. This was your last chance, and you'll never be able to uh, reclaim the glory. So you know, <laughs> come to BronyCon. It's not too late to get a ticket to BronyCon. I bought my tickets yesterday. Hippo the will greatest... be at BronyCon. Hippo Hippo's will be at coming. BronyCon. Oh my god. Greatest moral failing in my life, not voting Bernie 2016. Second greatest moral failing, not showing up for RFC KCON London. Hey, vote, vote in the um, primaries, people, if you can vote. I encourage it. And I'm yours, all for it. And yours as well. Yeah, vote the election. Voting's uh, yeah, good. Agree. Do it. Make a difference. Agree. Agree. Now's the time. Get get educated. Get educated. Indeed. Got the Indeed. two things you got to do. You got to vote in the primaries. You got to go to BronyCon. We can't let Celestia have another term. Vote Luna 2020. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank God. We didn't end this on real uh, politics. We got to vote for the... The dark horse candidate. Oh, you know what I'm oh, two yeah. ponies oh. stuck on the moon. Stuck on the moon. Stuck, <laughs> stuck on the moon. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks for being here. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Good boy. Yeah. Oh. I'm supposed to.